This is synchronicity. 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 Welcome to Synchronicity. My guest this week features the return of Michael Donovan. Michael, what is there to say? An incredible photographer, artist, provocateur, I believe he uses the old word to describe himself at this point uh, in this episode. Uh, This is a really, really interesting uh, episode. I've made a deal with Michael not to use any superlatives. I think I've already used the word awesome, but he's talented. He's insightful. He has a unique mind. Uh, a lot of people these days, it's easy, myself included, can get caught up in groupthink, can get caught up in our filter bubbles or narratives that are pitched by other people. Um, and I think we can all agree at this point that eh, shit's getting a little weird. Uh, many of us have noticed within our loosely defined social groups, online and off, that some people tend to deviate into uh, areas that you wouldn't expect them to do. And a lot of this conversation has to do with some of the information that Michael has been getting involved with. Um, we didn't get too much into the red pill stuff. We didn't get too much into the alt-right stuff because I don't really think Michael is alt-right. He wouldn't refer to himself as that. And I don't think he would really subscribe to most of the ideologies uh, of that camp. That said, he has found certain aspects of it uh, engaging um, and somewhat helpful for himself. And we we go into some of these things. So I originally reached out to Michael, you'll hear, uh, a few days ago because I saw a post that he made on Instagram and it was like overreaction and uh, getting offended is so 2018. I'm done with it. And those type of takes always interest me because I think there's two aspects of this, and we, and we get into this a lot in this podcast, which is, one, yes, yeah, some people really do need to chill out and get less offended at everything, because if that's your identity, that you're offended about everything, that's just as bad as being one who is doing the offending. So there's an aspect of that, but there's also a more subtle and nuanced take on it, which is, yes, let's not be so thin-skinned that every single thing makes us upset, but let's also try to recognize uh, where people are coming from, their perspectives, what have shaped those, what experiences have led to them thinking the way they do and potentially taking offense at something that maybe you and I don't take offense at. And this starts to get into identity politics and identities in general, which is the source of a lot of this consternation, um, and get very complicated. And when you start bringing in emotions and family and friends and familial bonds into this stuff, it can get even more complicated. So a lot of this episode has to deal, uh, is dealing with these types of issues, right? We talk about abortion in this episode. It's that type of episode. It is very worldly and kind of what is going on with our society. A lot of this has to do with kind of the rise of populism and kind of demagoguery and using a tried and true formula, which is blaming other people for systemic problems. It's much easier to scapegoat uh, liberals, conservatives, uh, immigrants, uh, Jews, black people. It, It doesn't matter. It's easier to blame the other person than to look at yourself or a system in which you find yourself and say, how do we go about changing this? So really what this episode is about, I think it initially started that Michael and I kind of wanted to debate about certain issues that we felt strongly about. But what emerged through this podcast is that we kind of share the same view on things, that What is needed now more than anything is dialogue, especially between people who have opposing viewpoints. That's critically important. And this could be for anything. This could be in the spiritual world, the political world, the social world, whatever it is. This is something that has to happen. And I don't say it has to happen because I'd like it to happen or it'd be cool if it happened. If it doesn't happen, the chances of everything kind of breaking apart the fabric of society and 
us not being able to get our shit together to make this planet inhabitable and a wonderful place to live, those chances go down that we won't be able to do that. Or they go down that we will be able to do it. <laughs> the chances go up that we won't be able to do it. So uh, it's very encouraging for me that both of us could have gone into this conversation expecting it to be somewhat confrontational, not in a negative way, but have opposing viewpoints, but that we kind of agree that we need to be talking about this stuff more than just reacting. Um, so, you know, and you'll you'll hear in the episode, I, I try to catch Michael like he tries to catch me being hypocritical at times, right? We're getting upset about something that we shouldn't be getting upset. We're overreacting to something that maybe we shouldn't be. Michael several times uses the words disgusting and gross. And I was like, "You're that's you being offended. And he's like, no, it's not. And we get into the kind of semantic debate that goes on with that. But what I will say is Michael is a very thoughtful, mindful person. I, I see a lot of people getting, I feel like Jordan Peterson is the gateway drug for a lot of people because he's rational, quote unquote. He is get using facts, quote unquote. And they're facts. They're just cherry pick facts. And he sells this story of oppression and identity politics and cultural Marxism that if you dig a little bit deeper, you will see is an utter and complete fabrication. It is not based on the perspectives of the global community and multiple people, races, ethnicities, genders. It's based on his perspective. And that's fine. We don't expect people to encompass all perspectives in the world. There's too many. But when something is presented as gospel and it can lead people down a path to questioning what's going on, uh, you know, why are immigrants taking our jobs? Why are women fighting for equal rights when they're not equal? These things are very pernicious. They're very dangerous ideas, and they're proliferating now more than ever, as all ideas are, right? And one key component of this conversation is this idea of the patriarchy. And my contention is the patriarchy, of course, exists. It's identifiable. It's a system's rules and laws that are codified and kind of carried out uh, as the dominant ruling culture. And Michael has a hard time with the word patriarchy because he thinks too many people hear the word and think that all men are bad. Fuck men. It's time for women. And while some of that is true, of course not all men are bad. He also thinks, and he references the episode that me, Sean, Cass, and Jen did, which he describes as a circle jerk, where it's basically us just kind of blaming white men for all of the problems of society. And I think, yes, when we use generalizations like all white men suck and white men have been fucking it up, it can get lost. Of course, we don't mean all white men. I'm a white man. I think I do things that fuck things up. But I don't think I've set up the institutions that have kind of ruined the world. But it's hard to deny the fact that patriarchy and patriarchal systems have ruled the world for at least a few millennia, probably more. And we know there are matriarchal societies that predated patriarchal societies, and they had flaws too. It's not that one is better than the other. I think what we're looking for is a harmonious balance. And when we have these antagonistic clashes between people, it gets very difficult to find that harmony. So that's a lot of what this episode is about. Is about. I want to point out uh, one point. Michael asked me to correct this. We were talking about Natalie Wynn, who's also known as ContraPoints, who's a wonderful transgender woman who really has helped me understand a lot of these issues that I didn't know at all, especially the pronouns thing. It can sound crazy. It can sound normal. It can sound mean spirited. Any of these things can come up. But she is. If you're if you're looking for an inroad into thoughtful, intellectual, but compassionate dialogue about uh, transgender issues, Natalie is amazing. So he said at this point that she, in this episode, that she was saying that if you don't have sex with a transgender person, you're transphobic. And I was like, there's no way she said that. That's impossible. She's not that type of person. I know there are people in the trans world who think like that and act like that, but I know that she is not one of those people. So it's important that we make the distinctions between the voices that are really trying to do some thoughtful, helpful work and those that are really just kind of adding more noise to the situation. So he wanted to correct himself and say that it wasn't her, which I knew. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to ramble on too much on this episode because it is very long. This is a record length synchronicity. It was so long that I even baked a loaf of bread during the episode, literally put it in the oven, baked it, took it out. Um, so 
I, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little bit different than what you will normally hear on Synchronicity, but I think very much uh, in tune with kind of the cultural climate that's going on, which is not any different than our spiritual climate, right? It's the same fucking thing. So go check out Michael on Instagram, the Michael Donovan, studiodonovan.com. His art is awesome. Uh, I've spoken about it plenty of times. You don't have to take my word for it. Go check it out. Go get some prints of his if you dig him. And uh, talk to him. He's a very engaging person and is open-minded. He's open-minded and stubborn. My my favorite type of person. Right? How's that for a superlative? Michael, um, that's it. Let's get to the episode. All right. Without further ado, here is Michael Donovan. What's up, dude? What's going on, dude? What's going on, dude? Dude, somebody just tried to do a podcast with me, tried to interview me for his. Yeah. And he did um, a call call. What does that mean? And the call kept dropping. Oh, a video? And he'd be like, no, just a call. Oh. Just a call. It's just uh, something's happening in LA. Like a lot of um, people, like our phones keep dropping calls lately. Oh. Um, or weird. getting bad just call service. Mm. So I'd like, you know, because it's an artist one, so I'd like talk for, it's like straight up like, talk for a couple minutes kind of thing you know yeah, yeah, yeah and then you'd be like oh i lost you like halfway through man yeah. <laughs> i've had that happen on a few of these it's very very frustrating yeah i'm like dude i can't i'm like just when you get your audio sorted <laughs> yeah give me a call man. yeah i feel you well you sound pretty yeah. good huh you sound pretty good quality yeah you sound good quality too good good, good quality to you too son. Good, good quality uh i'm ready to get started Okay. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me, man. Now red pill me. I'm not going to red pill red pill you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. I'm curious. You know what I can't, the thing I really want to look, uh, I can't wait for, is listening to the intro of this podcast. <laughs> I, I, You know, it's funny. It's so funny, Michael. It's very funny. No. I, I was thinking the same thing earlier today. I'm like, the intro for this podcast is probably going to be the most interesting thing in terms of me trying to figure out what I'm going to say about it. Just anticipating um, some of the conversation that we're going to have today. But enough lead up, man. Tell me what the well, fuck. Real quick, can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you do me a favor and not call me awesome and amazing and a really cool, really cool man? I'm gonna. Really cool I'm gonna. Person. I'll make sure. I'm gonna remove all of your adjectives that you use <laughs> to describe people. You can use talented or. <laughs> I'm gonna use only those words, and oh. no, I'll I'll come up with some other superlatives for you, buddy. You should. You should just just so that I can get offended. Okay. Good. 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 So tell me what has been going on. What's going on? What have you been noticing? I love okay. your mind. It's one of my favorite minds. I know. So what's going on? You love what? It's one of your mind is oh. one of my favorite minds that I know. I wasn't trying to have you just repeat that. I really didn't hear it. I, I believe <laughs> that. I believe that. You just wanted to hear the praise again. And yeah. Again. Um, okay. No. Okay. So obviously, because you called me yesterday at 630 in the morning or some crazy ass time because um, you had seen. I'm trying to pull it up. Uh, I forgot. I forgot it was 6:30 your time. Let's let's be fair. I just assume Fucking irresponsible asshole. Everyone is like me and is is just in my world. So that's your fault, really. Yeah, pretty much. I do the opposite though because I call people at um at like late at night. Like I'll be up at one in the morning and I'll be like, I should call someone. Yeah. Yeah. So hold on, let me find the actual post. Okay. Um, cause I think that, okay, so this is what I posted. This is it. It's just black screen. Read it. Read it. Yeah. 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 Read it verbatim. Read it. Read it. Yes. So the black screen says being offended is so 2018 period. (laughs) So that was the, 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 the actual picture. Yeah. Um, and then underneath it, so, so, and then, okay, so to put that in context too, 
Uh, I, should I put that in context or should I just go ahead and just read in the caption? No, put it in context. Yeah, just in uh, just in context. Explain just, your uh, rationale. We, we behind all know it. what it is. We all we all know what what the fuck it is. Where everybody's like offended, everybody's hurt, everybody's crying, everybody's upset, everybody's like confused, everybody's frustrated, everybody's everybody's everybody everybody. And I can go deeper into the context, like some of the situations that started to come up. Yeah. Um, that kind of ran into it. They're led into it. But we can probably, I'll probably just bring those up later. Okay, yeah, that's cool. But just in a nutshell, like, we all have friends that are just either dealing with other people that are offended by them or that are just being shut down or or we deal with it in our own lives and we or we we see friends or family members. Yeah. Um, fortunately, I don't have any family members like this, but I see friends that are just offended by everything. Mm. So it's just like, come the fuck on, people. And... I feel that the reason why putting it on there too is that um, my audience typically for either my podcast or photography is the same group. It's photographers and artists and it's spiritualists and people in the psychedelic community. It's just those four quadrants kind of come together. What a fun and rational and non-emotional group of people you've (laughs) cultivated, Michael. Yeah, yeah. And it's cool because like one of the guys that follows me, like he works at the DMV and um he comment he just messaged me like a few days ago on something else, just like I really like your work, blah blah blah. And it made me look at like DMV people differently. It's like, yeah, they could be appreciating this stuff too. It's not like they are you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. they get shit on by everybody. Well, yeah, no, because it's I always try to be nice to like customer service reps or quote unquote DMV. No, we people. try to, but we're all sticks to them. I, listen, I will say this: <laughs> most nine out of my ten interactions with customer service people, this has not always been the case, and this might just be for selfish reasons. I find that it, you just deal people deal with you better if you deal with them like humans. But nine out of ten, I try to go out of my way to be respectful because I realize the majority of their calls or interactions are with angry, impatient people. So, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, though. It, it definitely gives you an added perspective to know that yeah. people connect And if you're stuff. having a bad day, they're the easiest people to shit on. Of course. Because I think that's the thing, too. I think we all try to be nice to them. Not everybody does. And I can get into some something funny. Remind me at some point to talk about sushi in Beverly Hills. <laughs> okay. um, <laughs> it's not what you think. It's not what you think at all. But... Um, Anyway, uh, it's where I went off on somebody who is not nice to somebody. Not nice. Anyway, so <laughs> you get the you get the gist of it. Like, um, and and within so within the psychedelic and spiritual community, it's all like we'll talk more about this, but it's all love and light. It's all a lot of it. Peaceful, is. A lot of it. Be is. in the moment. Oh. M- a lot of it, a big chunk of it. The majority. It's a lot of like the majority. Let's say. Yeah, it's a lot of like unpractical shit. Like, okay, so I was having like I moved out here and I was like burning through savings and, um, you know, like I was just kind of frustrated with everything because it's like I wasn't. This is a few months ago, and I wasn't getting work and <clears throat> uh, my car ended up uh, the fuel injector fucked up and so I had to go take it in. And the the mechanic kept jerking me around and I had just gotten my first paycheck and they were like, this is the fuel injector. And then like I go to pick it up because they said it's ready. Yeah. Ten minutes before I showed up, there was like more problems. And I was just frustrated because it's like it literally was burning through every dollar that I had made in a deposit from a job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was a it was a substantial amount of money. And my friend was just like. And I was frustrated because it's like, you know, you're just like, God damn it. <laughs> you know, you're just angry. And my friend's just like, just be in the moment, man. <laughs> and it's like, come the fuck on. Like, get a fucking life. Like, that's your that's your response. Not like, yeah, that sucks. Let's go. Let's go blow up the mechanic shop. Like, just some kind of dicky, funny kind of thing. Yeah, you know? like, fuck these people who are clearly fucking me. Yeah, yeah we're not totally. going to do anything. It's just like, come on, be a just relish with me don't do this like oh wow like what can we learn from this like come on if i'm gonna be in the moment then i want to be a dick right so anyway you know that's like the spiritual crowd the photography crowd it's like nobody makes waves everybody unless they're offended like so something that happened yesterday was two things happened yesterday i don't know when you're gonna release this podcast i'm gonna release it tomorrow it won't be that okay so two days ago or if you're listening 20 years in the future, 20 years ago, 
Um, two things happen in one day. Carl Lagerfeld dies, who's like an icon within the fashion industry. And uh, Burberry released. Um, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, they the had noose? like a noose. Yeah. Yeah, the noose. So my friend, who's one of these guys that's like fucking, I call him out on this, but it's so fucking annoying. He's like one of those guys that's like, dude, Carl Lagerfeld died today and I'm flying into Paris. Like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> And he's, he's a photographer friend. And I'm like, you fucking little bitch. <laughs> like, quit doing this shit. And if you'll notice one thing, I'm sure you'll notice right away. I'm no longer gun shy like I used to because it's where, you know, spiritual people, they're like, don't swear, don't do this stuff. So I'm like, fuck it. Just call, you know, just get back to when we were kids and we'd call people like assholes and, you know, it's other and, shit. And just to be clear, I think like most of that really boils down for me um to intention there's obviously context right i mean you obviously if you're in a certain situation not like obviously a, we all know it's no no no, no but no but we do we there do are some situations of... that it's obvious right if you're at a funeral you're not getting up and making pulling your dick out on top of the casket you know what i mean like there are situations i think at my funeral someone should do that okay but if <laughs> your funeral may be the exception but I, i'm sure you can agree that almost all other funerals this would be viewed as illicit behavior that most people would agree on i, I get what you're saying though and we'll get into the more of like the subtlety and the nuance of these things yeah which i think is where it gets really interesting but uh, not to cut you off i just want to point that out yeah 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 so so the whole thing was is that the the buddy of mine he he was like uh he was like doing that whoa i'm going to paris you know the last time i was here somebody died and it was like friends with the person that put together my art show so he's the, and, he's you know, the grim reaper fighting, like what's that he's the grim reaper yeah yeah well my thing was is i sent him a picture of the burberry news and i was like maybe carl died this way <laughs> <laughs> and he's one of those like posting carl carl you're carl 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 like and i'm just like you know he's just no, I'm not getting a response from him. And it's not like you ever met him. It's just like, you know, in the first comedy has like, whoa, I'm flying into Paris and, you know, on his story, on his Instagram story. And it's so much about this. And so people outside of rage, when they see something and they're like, oh, my God, Katy Perry shoes. Oh, my God, this. Oh, my God, that. Um, what's up with wait? They, what's going on with Katy Perry shoes? So Katy Perry designed these stupid looking shoes with an eyes and mouth. Oh, oh, those are her shoes. I believe it was a Katy Perry line. Oh. It's yeah, I'm pretty sure it was, it was her. It was, it was like, which one is one of the ones that annoy me? Either Katy Perry or Pink. So I think it's Katy Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Pink is always still upset about boyfriends. Like she's like 50 and she's still like, you are my boyfriend. I hate you. <laughs> I don't know a lot about Pink. Oh, just her music. It's just like she's trapped. I feel bad for her. Um. Anyway. I'm going to sound like an asshole on this. You already do. So, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah. So for the listeners that don't know, Katy Perry, can we fact that, check that real quick? You can Katie fact Perry. check it. I don't, I have, I saw the sandals and if you're talking about what I think you're talking about, it's these weird kind of like, they kind of look black facey yeah. sandals, but they're just kind of like goofy and ill designed. More, yeah. Than so it's two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and they're on a tan shoe and a black shoe. Yeah, and it's and just so like people, shitty design, not necessarily like I, it's I didn't. Not even shitty design. It's it like if you look at stupid. it, it's like so I could see someone would wear that, and I don't think that anybody would be like, "Oh, you're wearing black face shoes." I think that they were just like you were. Yeah, shoes the intention with a face on it. wasn't. Yeah, sure, sure. I, I think there's a case to be made for that, but in these sensitive times that we find ourselves in maybe not the wisest of choices for footwear. Right. Oh my God. Sorry. I just pulled up Katy Perry shoes just to see it. And then it says Katy Perry dedicates shoes day to late designer Carl, like the vlogger There you go. So it's all. Conspiracy. <laughs> and then the next thing just says black face shoe. That's all it says. Um, after kicking up shoe controversy over black face. Okay. I'm just closing my computer now. So the thing is like, with 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 the whole blackface thing too, like obviously like racism is bad. Like we all know, like it's it's just it's it's awful. It's bad. And I'm gonna I want to talk more about like why like a little bit about racism too, because like sure. I'm coming to like a really cool moment within my own life and understanding like why um, some things kind of transpired and like how things have shifted. And I understand like for you race, personally or personally, culturally? personally. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and it's a cultural thing. It was like. Basically, we'll talk more about it, but it's like I grew up 
you know, very like just working class family. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, like one of the first friends that I met. Like I don't, I don't even remember his name. Like we were just like kid kids, like super young kids. It's like this, like I, I know what you mean. That, like yeah. you know, it's like I don't remember his name. It's just like I remember him moving away, and I was sad. And then my next friend was like a blonde hair, blue eyed totally. kid named Brian. And, and then I had like my neighbors, blonde hair, blue eyed Chan, and blah blah blah. But then all my other friends were like, it's um, it's Russell Allenwood, who's like my closest friend, who is Native American. Scott Glatzmeyer, yeah. who's like part of that. Native American. It's like Mexican. Like I look around, friends are friends, like, right? Yeah, I didn't look at them like that. I just didn't. Totally. I, you just saw them as people. But then when I moved to New York or moved to Chicago, I started to find that I had less and less people, especially toward the end, in my social circle that were of different ethnicities. Yeah. yeah. And now I realize like what it is, is it's less to do with um, race. Like I was, I, I, I was talking to a friend about it. I was like, well, well, like one of my black friends, I was like, I don't understand why like I have less black friends anymore i guess like we grow apart is what i just assumed because i couldn't understand i didn't understand the dynamics of what was happening in new york and in terms of the money situation and basically you know i was in a professional class in new york where it starts to like really trim not fully but it trims down a lot within especially within the fashion world it's like i had black friends and i had asian friends but not at the level that i had growing up Sure. And it made me feel even more uncomfortable until I came back to when I came back to the West Coast, when I came to L.A. And I saw that, like, suddenly all my friends, like when this meme or this post came out, the last uh, two people I was talking to was it, it didn't even come to me. It didn't, it didn't even make me realize it until I was talking to you yesterday. It's like yeah. the, the last two people that I talked to that night was my friend Ricky, who's Asian, and my friend who's Jewish. And um, or, or sorry, sorry. The last one I was talking to is my friend Tristan. He's mm-hmm. black. And then I woke up to my friend Ricky who texted, woke up to you. And then I woke up to Ricky texting me. And I was like, I was really happy that my friends are, feel like they're back to normal because I don't look at them like as a race, sure, you sure. know, but yeah. just because of the context of everything, I'm like, this is really cool. Like, I feel like I'm getting back to my roots where I don't even notice this stuff, but it's just there. Yeah. Whereas I think what happened with a lot of people is that we've been focused so heavily on race and racism that you can't even sometimes you have to almost like look at somebody and be like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, do you know what I mean? Does this make any well, sense? He, or do I sound I look, like no, crazy? You, you sound actually very reasonable. And I think these are the thoughts that people ask themselves often, especially white people. And I think it's really, really useful to talk about this stuff out loud. Um, my context for racial diversity mirrors yours in a lot of way, although it was ironically in larger urban areas in Boston and New York, at least I had a more racially diverse set of friends than up here in the Hudson Valley, where it's just like, if you just do it by the numbers, it's going to be less likely. That said, um, friendships are easier to maintain now over time and space because of digital communications, which makes it a little more nebulous than I think before. And that's an added kind of component of complexity. But the, the one other kind of nuance or subtlety i'd like to provide for this thing is that so i just listened to this whole uh a whole bunch of biographies from presidents to uh frederick Douglass, you know mm-hmm. who's like the original you know he was a slave and then he was a champion for his race and a republican and politics and all these things an incredible life truly but it was really really fucking interesting to hear uh Something that's so simple in retrospect that most people will agree with regardless of who they are, that slavery is wrong, right? No one would want their family or friends to be in slavery, but the amount of divisiveness within that one side of the argument that slavery is wrong as opposed to right, there could be so many different shades of ways to express that and go about it and relate it to cultural institutions and governments and society that it really is never as to use a pun intended, as black or white as people think. Now, the other thing I'll add to it is that I don't think most people, most white people, and I'd extend this to most just people in general, understand how critical and terrible, just how terrible existence has been for black people, especially in this country since their like earliest time here and how far it extends even into the present day 
with some of these institutions are were literally designed to oppress and kind of terrorize people based on nothing more than race. So there's two things we're talking about here. There's one, this innocence when you're a kid and you don't see race, right? Your friends are your friends. You don't give a shit. I see this with Eli. He, he doesn't He doesn't distinguish. Exactly. People. When you're a kid, you don't see anything. Yeah, you really don't. Like there comes yeah. a point where you may be shaped by your uh, perception in terms of skin color or then cultural awareness. But there is a point where you just like, you don't give a shit. These are just your friends. These are your boys. It doesn't yeah. matter, right? And I think that's that's a that's a very real kind of colorblind thing that people experience. But then, well, can yeah, can yeah, I yeah. interject for one thing? The, sure, the, sure. The thing that is cool about kids, though, too, is that when everybody does this, like you end up pulling out your arm with your friend and just talking about like the difference, like, oh, I'm darker than you, I'm lighter than you, and it's not like a like a, anything other than that's cool. You know, it's yeah, yeah. Like, there's no I, judgment I, and I got cultural an awareness. You have, I have an Audi, you have an any kind of thing. You totally. Know, it's like, what is it? What's a PP? <laughs> you know, it's like, no, I, it, I totally get it. It's dude. boys versus girls. It's like figuring out, oh, we're different. Yes. But we're still not different. I just got to point that out because, like, that's such a, yeah, no, like there a is a sweet level. thing about childhood is that you get to be different and it's, it's, but, but no one cares. Yeah, well, and that's one of the things I really enjoy about you a lot is that your kind of connection to the innocence and playfulness of childhood has always been a theme, I think, since I've known you. And I think it's really cool. The other kind of layer, though, of this racial component is that outside of that innocence where everyone is kind of equal, when you move out into the socioeconomic world, regardless of race or color, there are realities that exist that kind of underpin these systems which most people at this point that I speak to would agree is fucking broken, regardless of where they fall on like Trump to no Trump to climate change to no climate change. Most people are like, yeah, this shit doesn't really, it's not working well. You know, maybe the top 1% of the 1% are like, yeah, this is going great. But everyone else is kind of like, oh, this is not looking wonderful. So those systems directly impact not only just on a cultural level, but a psychic level, a cultural kind of ancestral lineage level. And they're always kind of bouncing around our subconscious and our unconscious. So when we think about a lot of these things, we don't sometimes necessarily recognize as much historical and kind of psychic resonance to things that are going on. Do you know what I mean? Like this, it's, it's a, so yeah. Yeah. So I, so I agree. Um, the area that I'd like, I mean, I kind of want to play with this a little bit because, um, you know, I, keep going, keep going. No, no, that's that's basically all I was is pointing out that I, what I walked away with having just finished this biography and, and it was on the heels of Ulysses S. Grant, who everyone knows about emancipation in this country with Lincoln. But the fact is, is before the Emancipation Proclamation, Lincoln was like hedging his bets and was like, yeah, slavery is OK for the southern states, but only because they might elect me president. So this slow cultural shift happened where it was like, all right, emancipation happened. Now what? And it's not like all of a sudden everyone's treated equally. That's not what happened. Then you get Ulysses S. Grant. He kind of presides over Reconstruction, which is this really fucked up time period, which sees the Ku Klux, the original Ku Klux emerge, which was not like the ones we think about with the white hoods and kind of like, you know, bumpkins with burning crosses. Like they were, it was a systemized underground dish organization that literally just went and murdered black people like indiscriminately, like, and was built into the government institutions. Anyway, you see this through Reconstruction, but you also see it kind of get tossed and overturned. Uh, with as soon as Lincoln is shot, what most people don't think about is he was kind of this shining beacon of hope that was changing. He'd got them through the Civil War. He was this kind of leader who people could galvanize behind, even if they weren't on his side originally. When he was killed, it was a split ticket. So Andrew Johnson then became oh, yeah, president. Yeah. And yeah. he was the, like, people think Trump was the worst president. People don't know about Andrew Johnson. Like, they don't understand how fucking bad of a president Andrew Johnson like Trump is bad don't don't get me wrong he doesn't see he's not going to stand up in like the top 10 but Andrew Johnson was like outwardly one of the only I think maybe the only president with in publicly acknowledged remarks and printed just racist just totally overtly racist from Tennessee was just like uh, not only racist against um black people but white people just like everyone he was just like a very angry man but anyway wait so if he's racist against 
Everyone. Because that, that segues into something right there that opens up the door. So he's racist against black people, which, um, and then he's racist against white people. He was white. Well, he was racist against more. So he grew up in a impoverished, more not impoverished, but like blue okay, collar keep system. Going. Go, so go a little faster. He then basically <laughs> went up through the Tennessee legislature and kind of resented and admired the Tennessee ruling class the slaveholders right so he hates these people but he kind of wants to be them that's basically his situation that's andrew johnson okay because that brings into where i was cringing when i was listening to your um circle jerk podcast (laughs) yes i have acknowledging i acknowledge it was a circle jerk the very ape uh yeah (laughs) i love your size (laughs) okay love your size Yeah, yeah that's what i'm saying i love your size your mournful sighs at the podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was like a circle jerk. I thought you said sighs, like, and I was like, is there, a, is that like an, a thing that I don't know, like a joke about like circle jerks? Like, and I, I like your sighs, like that's what you said to Sean. Oh, like yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> it's classic circle jerk humor, Michael, of course. <laughs> yeah, I don't hang out in circle jerks like you. <laughs> uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, so, no, um, you know, the thing that well, one of the things that made me sigh and I, I like I love you and I love Sean and Cass and Jen, you know, but listening to it, I like I told you yesterday um, was that I, I cringed a, like quite a bit here and there. Um, you could about, say you, you weren't a fan at times of the conversation. I could say I was not a fan, but I cringed. Like, you you were like, oh, God. Yeah, okay, it okay. really was. It was like, come on. Like, I was in my car, like, come on, guys. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> and there's so many. So you already many told areas. me this, so I'm not, it's not catching me off guard. I just really enjoy it. No, I know. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm sure it, and it wouldn't because, and I'm not perfect in any way either, but one of the things was where, you know, I don't remember the how it went down, but it was essentially like, my impression of it was like, yeah, man, it's like, it's like the white man is the problem. Yeah, man. It's the white man. White man's the problem, man. And then wait, the was I the been, first? Well, actually, was I the first one? Was I the first one who said no, it could have been like, yeah, man. <laughs> white man's the problem. Yeah, man. White wait, who problem. am I? Like, <laughs> Which, I like is that the second voice? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, know, I love it. But it was like, it was this thing where it was men, white men hating on white men. And you thought we were virtue signaling. I kind of open up. What's that? You thought we were virtue signaling, basically, that we were saying, hey. Definitely virtue signaling. Okay. Okay. And it's like, come on, pull it together, you dumb fucks. Like, you can't blame (laughs) everything on white men. You can't blame the separation on white men. Like, you guys brought up the Gillette commercial, and you were like, and it was just, that was cringeworthy, too. And it's like, I didn't know anything about it. That was me finding it. Let me me explain this. Let me just like, I just want to play with this for a second. (laughs) Sorry, not to cut you off. It's your show. No, no, you, 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 you have the platform floor, my friend. (laughs) Yeah. So the Gillette commercial, for those that don't know, Gillette came out with this campaign. It was like a men's, like it's for fucking men's razors, not women's razors, not razors, men's razors. Um, I stopped shaving 10 years ago, about 10 years ago when I saw something in ad week about, um, which is like a trade journal It was either ad week or one of the, something similar to it where lever and Johnson and Johnson or Procter and Gamble were discussing having a, um, a, a war on men because they realized they were missing a lot of, a lot of good money in that men market. And, uh, immediately there's like very aggressive campaigns about men and our, shaving and the the clothes that we wear and blah 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 Mm. and i just stopped at that point i was like well fuck this so you fast forward to this gillette campaign and they just wanted to revisit their um their whole slogan of the best a man can get so they hire the best a man can get right (laughs) isn't that the yeah okay that's exactly it yes so if you go back to the original commercials it was like men being men men that were just like fighting fires and they were like being a good husband and they were being like a good worker. They were being like uh, good with their sons. They were just like, just really pointing out like you guys are doing it. Keep doing it. Keep being strong men. Like be like, you got it. Like you got it. You guys are like being good men. 
and it was there's something that's like kind of cheesy but it's also very poetic it's very beautiful it's kind of inspiring that's what it was meant to be i don't know who the art director was on that or the creative director but they really nailed it the agency cool. nailed it on that one so fast forward to this one because the thing is that i'm an artist and i sell my art uh Go to studiodonovan.com and buy some art. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I sell my art and I also do commercial work. And commercial work is what pays the giant bill. So you yeah. look at someone like Sean, it's like he does his personal work. Yeah. But, you know, and he's done, he has some really good business models that helped like Cam Girls and other ones like have a success. But he, I believe he um, has openly talked about like, I think it's like Pornhub or My Free Cams or somebody like that paid a lot of money for him to show his his documentary. So it's like, it's still a big corporation. We still work with big corporations because they can pay our bills for an entire year. Well, yeah. He, and, and he openly acknowledges often they both. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it was like, you know, like shit on the corporations. And so what it is is like corporations, like try their best to like do public art and blah, blah, blah. And all they're trying to do is revisit their campaign and use some art. So they hire an yeah. agency that's very inclusive. You know, they try to not have like any men and they try to have like all people of color. The director they had was like a white girl from Australia. But if you go back and you look at her actual website, it's very hard feminist shit where it's like the only there's one campaign where it's like a women's campaign. And it would be really cool. It's just women being tough and, you know, like doing um, doing really hard athletic shit. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is really good until the man shows up. And the first man that comes in, they just tackle him. It's like an old white man and they just beat him up. <laughs> what? And it's like, well, why would you need to do that? Why would you need to do that? And then you look at her reel and it's like. It's all about like um, men have been oppressing women by wearing bras, like for women wearing bras. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And so when you look at that campaign and that campaign is just so much like virtue signaling that and also shaming men. What for was being, the campaign? I still don't, I never saw it. What was the Gillette thing? It opens up and it's just like men looking in the mirror and it's talking about the Me Too movement like on the radio. Um, and it's like we could be doing better. And then all of a sudden a boy runs through this like uh, – this uh, this there's like oh so there's a woman like holding her kid i don't remember the exact thing there's a woman holding her kid and the kid's like it's like the little text messages coming up and he's getting bullied and then um and which is really interesting oh, wait, sorry so then like this room comes through and like all these boys are chasing this little boy and then uh it's like this like montages of all these scenes you know okay of just boys being assholes and being bullied by other bullies and they they they're they're, they're when they have the boy getting bullied you just assume it's a boy now because it's already framed that boys are bullying boys which is more likely a girl is going to bully a girl through text all right i mean who knows but boy. either way both genders bully <clears throat> yes but it, they've framed it so it's just like boys are okay. bullying got boys it, got and, it and then it keeps going, and it's like uh, more Me Too stuff. It's like cringy TV shows. They pull out uh, a scene of Anna Ferris like yelling, who's uh, or talking like uh, sorry, I don't remember if she's yelling. Or I think talking it's Anna. Comedy. I think it's Anna. Ferris. I don't care. <laughs> I like her. I, I like her. I don't. I don't at all. I think that she's. <laughs> I think that you can watch enough YouTube videos of her being uh, hypocritical on a level that's just disgusting. That. And, and about tearing people apart and make and, and capturing this the same narrative. It's just this old white male uh, is the problem. Like even with you, you were like, yeah, the baby boomers suck on that that cringe podcast that you had. Like it was like the baby boomers suck. Um, they do kind of suck. To die. They no, do. they don't. They fucking no. Stop this. this is Here's the thing. the thing. This is the problem. No, hold yeah. on. Let me. This is why they don't suck. We were at we were in a war, and this generation that generation busted their ass to like make sure that we were okay most and then the following generation didn't. most boomers didn't no 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 listen i'm now getting there so the next generation was dealing with the parents who like really sacrificed and went through the great depression and wars and they continue to try to make things the best that they can they um you know some of them brought in the spiritual sexual revolution others of them they just tried to like to build up the the tech world they built the infrastructure that we have today. Like the previous generation, the generation before that, the generation before that, they just were stronger and stronger. If we were to say that they suck, then you have to acknowledge that someone in history is eventually going to look at our generation and say this generation sucks. Totally. Sucked. Of course, we, we do stop. suck. We're the worst. No, what do you mean? stop it. That's the shitty behavior right listen, there. Listen, That's listen, it. Listen, 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 That's listen. the shitty behavior. What you did right there is like, it's basically, it's so gross to me <laughs> it is like absolutely disgusting what you just did right there 
Because what you're doing is what so many people are doing, which is just shitting on themselves. Okay. And they're becoming like this, like, okay, hold on. They're either becoming like a victim, you know, like, oh, poor me, woe is me, or we're the worst, we're the worst, rather than saying, hey, life is fucking hard. This is challenging. This is difficult. We're doing the best that we can. The next generation is not fucking any better. The generation out there is not going to be fucking better. Like you have a kid and many people have kids and they're not raising them to be any better. They're making them to become little pussies, <laughs> uh, you know, which is what the, the baby boomers were, the pussies of the of the older generations. You know what I mean? The Gen X was the pussies of the baby boomers. The millennials were the pussies. You can just keep rolling the pussy downhill. But by belittling and saying we suck, we suck and beating that drum. What is what good is that going to do okay. for you I or think, anyone else? I think you're get it together, man. You're missing you're missing two <laughs> things here. One is okay. your offendedness at that behavior is I'm not offended. I'm not offended. Well, I'm you clearly out. replay it when we so whoever just listened, flip it back thirty seconds a minute and tell me if you think Michael is offended. No, second I'm of all, roast out. You, same difference. thing. Oh well, okay. Fine. No, it's not. Well, we can dis- like, dissect that oh. afterwards. The second it thing is, is that this is this right. is like telling you straight up. This I understand. Is like bad behavior. This I am is like not... a child. You are a kid that is just that's just uh, what would it be the equivalent? It's like if if your kid showed up and if you walked in the door and he just said, um, if you heard your kid say what you just said, uh, my friends and I, we are the worst. We are the worst. And dad, you're the worst. Okay. It's like, get it together, kid. You're being fucking dumb. M- Michael, I, I hope it's real. you can appreciate that when I say boomers suck, A, I'm not specifically referring to any one individual, and B, I can't possibly mean or intend to mean that all people born within a certain date range categorized as boomers are the worst. What I mean is the prevailing ethos of the time, of the generation, I'm just saying is probably not one of the best in recent memory. We can't even go back that far in terms of comparing and contrasting these things because societal norms change pretty damn quickly, even for... So I I clearly don't mean... And when I'm saying I'm the worst, I'm more acknowledging that I could maybe be doing a little bit better about being aware of climate change and not saying that I am actually... But a Noah, terrible human being. But Noah, the thing is, like, I yes, you can say that. But the the words, what's what? The, there is an element where people are actually soaking this up, and this is the problem that I have that I've been trying to explain to a lot of friends, and mm-hmm. then friends just shut me down for. Okay. But I believe that we're in a very serious uh, spiritual warfare right now, and I think it's a like spiritual war that's been happening for for a while now. Um, it, it's it's. It, it's about it, it's deep and i think that these wounds are very deep and people are internalizing this and when it, this you know you're not the first to say our generation sucks and blah 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 and people suck and i don't blah, think blah. we're that bad just to be clear just to be clear yeah, i think so, millennials so are kind of awesome getting at is that, hey saying that kind of shit you wouldn't allow your kid to just come in and make like you yeah, can make jokes making about a it joke. but that's if not he was a, making a joke i would and and i it was understood that it's a joke and that there's more but you're room for you know nuance. the things like you have no punchline to that like it's like the point where the first time someone tells listen the first time someone tells a joke it's like funny but then the second time they do it and the, the third the fourth the fifth the sixth it doesn't get any funnier it just gets like becomes like part of like a truth okay. narrative well let me explain let me let me maybe give you some insight or just why. accepting but no, like, let me, maybe maybe i'm right on this let me give you some insight into why i actually <laughs> say baby boomers suck and millennials suck or don't suck the reason i don't suck but How listen to me just michael just say like pause mistakes, michael okay. pause and listen for 30 seconds that's all i'm asking you just pause <laughs> and breathe. listen for 30 Let seconds. Me breathe. thank you all i'm saying is part of the reason that i say that is so people tug at that string that's a very confrontational stance to make so if people pull a little bit deeper they might see that, oh, well, why is he coming to this conclusion? Why is he even saying it? And if you just pull like a couple of times, you realize I clearly don't mean that all baby boomers or millennials or me or my family or my friends or my race or my all of that stuff. It, it, it's it's always more complex and nuanced than that. It's always the case. I think recognizing that people are missing that 
very often now. I've noticed it within myself, especially within the last year and my relationship to media and seeing how I can get outraged at something I genuinely am not outraged about if I think about it for a little bit longer and and look at the context. So I, I get what you're saying, but I mean, I think you also have to look at it that when people say some of these things, it might be more nuanced than just the words that they're using. So if you just want more specificity in terms of people speaking, that's want, one thing. But I think it would be wise if intelligent people started looking at the language that they used, not in terms of like, okay, so this is very this is very difficult because like I'm kind of looking at it as like, what is our path forward? That's why I'm doing this. We as, you know, a, like, that's as, why, as a human race, as a yeah, as okay. a society. Like I'm, okay. I think a lot of us are trying to figure out what is the path forward, and it's like I, the way that I see it, um, and the reason why I put myself back out there, the reason why I started the podcast again, the reason why I'm like posting what I posted, um, which ended up into a shitstorm of its own in a way. Um, the reason why is because I think that all of this stuff. Um, we villainized a lot of people. A lot of people have become villains, right? And the more that we repeat some of the words that initially would have been like a joke, they turned into a reality for some people. And now it's become like a total truth for them. It becomes a fact. Mm -hmm. And I agree, it's nuanced. It's like, yeah, some baby boomers suck balls. Like the Parkland kids, I can go on about why it's really great what they've done. I can also go on about how some of them are little shit bags. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, each individual in each instance, each moment is different. You know, we can, we can talk about David Hogg and I can go back and forth, whether he's a good guy or a bad guy, but he's not either. He's just a dude. And then he's having these, he's, you know, having these things, yes. these moments. Yeah. But so I guess it's capturing people is the problem. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm just trying to, to to get get these um what's the word um <sighs> trying to get like these like blanket statements yeah re-analyzed. generalizations and I've gotta, yeah and I've got to get it for myself too I'm not perfect but I'm working on it but when I do hear people do it and I say it's gross just as if someone said it to me like oh that's gross it's not that I'm offended I'm not offended I'm not offended. I'm grossed out. It's it's repugnant. It's just like I want to throw <laughs> it's up. It's literally the same. No, it's not. Offended is like like a friend of mine was like, um, um, I okay. Watch this. You're gonna love this. Have a you ever heard? Much, have you ever heard the term though? Like that odor is offensive to me. Yeah, offensive is different than it's making you throw up. Listen to me <laughs> for one second. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 please go ahead. I'm coming off as a total asshole right now. Um, My plan is working perfectly. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Good job, dude. I'm really good at it. No, but but, but go, just go. Just Just let him paint himself. Just give him that paint. Well, I really don't even, I don't even really look at it in, in any way like either of us could paint each other into quarters, corners. I'm genuinely interested in your perspective on this stuff because just so you know, like, you're not the only person within my social circle who just so you know no i'm just i'm i'm just saying like <laughs> this isn't the only conversation i've had and it's clearly yeah. something is going on with what a lot of people refer to as identity politics and being overly pc or offended and i think to just like get a little meta about it that those are also generalizations and something is taking place here and I'm interested in figuring out what that is. So I, I really don't think you're painting war, yourself. Dude. Well, explain what you mean by that then. I think that, I think that, you know, what's we, you know, one of the first questions you asked me on your first podcast is what is you're doing? Remember when you used to do this? Like, I'm going to ask you 10 questions. Shit. Yeah. I mean, I just started, I didn't know what to do. I know. I just remember giving you shit. It's like, just have a conversation. You dumb fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a right. uh, hundred <laughs> 60 episodes to be able to do that effectively. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, so, so we, one of the questions you asked in the original was like, what is spirituality? And it's like, I was like, I, I believe I said at the time, it's like, it's like, cause I was still kind of forming that my, my idea of it, but it's a human spirit. Um, and I think that there's people that want to just bring us down. I think there's just bummers on the planet. There's not many of them, but there's like a few bummers totally and party poopers and, um, you know, that are just suicidal train wrecks um, that want to bring civilization down. And then most people just want to have a good time. We're here. 
Yeah. We're, we're not, you know, we don't remember where we came from. We don't know where we're going, but we know that there's that other place and we won't necessarily always agree on it, but, um, where we're going, but it's like, well, we're here, let's have a good time. And there's a lot of hardships, you know, just life is the world is just trying to like constantly get you, you know, there's, there's always, um, someone's got to eat and you're their dinner kind of thing. Not, not that it's like every moment it's happening, but you know, well, that's the, the system a that has emerged for modern civilization is certainly that we know that, right? Yeah, we know there's yeah, we, billions of people starving us. and we know that resource wise, just pure math. We know that doesn't have to be the case. So we know the system that's emerged is somewhat, you know, reductive to that. I need to eat. I'm going to eat your dinner. And yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Yeah. 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 So anyway, the whole thing is, is that, that, that there's these people that are out there and they've just kind of snaked their way through and it, they've, they've grown in size since like forever ago. If you think again, go back to cave days, you know, there's like a civilization of like a hundred, you probably would get one of those every like hundred years and they'd be able to combat it. But now we have billions of people and you only, and people that are really shit on, they had bombs dropped on them. They were starving. They yeah. were disenfranchised in school. They were picked on whatever the hell it is. And there's more and more of them and they're able to like congeal and create a stronger army and, I just feel that that's what the spiritual war is, is, is that there are people that really want to like bring us down and make us like hate each other. And so we, we have like stronger. And, and so I want to talk about this friend that really started to like help me see that things are just really fucking stupid. Is this friend, um, is this friend Jesus, Michael? <laughs> fucking love that dude. <laughs> I uh, genuinely love Jesus, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, no, it's a friend that, like, I want to, I'm going to try to kick it into maybe three examples of what happened. Okay. And then you'll get an idea of, like, the person's mindset. And I don't think that this person is the only person like this. Okay. And then, because there's, there's a lot around it, because I've been like, why am I attached to this person? Like, why am I, like, is this person in my life when there's so much drama all the time? Okay. So this friend, she was going through a breakup. And I was like, hey, that's that sucks. Um, you know, we've been friends for a while and like you're just trying to help the person out. So I um, she's back in New York. So I was like, what's your address? I'll send you a book. Um, I thought about it because she's also said, oh, when I have some money, she's kind of, uh, you know, she's just working. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, when I have some money, I want to get some books on Buddhism. OK. And so I was like, oh, you know, if she's in a breakup. I had Lojo Rinsler on my podcast. He wrote yeah, totally. a really good book sure. called Love Hurts. And I was like, it's a simple read. It'll take her like 10 minutes. And it's like a decent introduction to Buddhism. Yeah. So Shum I was like, what's Shambhala, your address? right? That's Shambhala. What's that? Yeah, Shambhala. Yeah. yeah. Shambhala Press. Um, so I was like, I sent her the book. I was like, hey, I sent you a book. Um, you know, it's like a quick read. You don't have to read the whole thing. You know, like whatever. Just like pick it up. But it's just, it just made me think of you. So your take on that would be what? Just real quick. Just like in a quick 20 second, 10 second. What do you mean? My was that a good guy, bad it? guy? What's your, what's your thoughts? Like, if it I sent you sounds a book, like, like a friend you... trying to send something to someone who oh. was going through a time. God, no, Noah. God, no. What I'm you... offended. It literally, <laughs> I'm offended with what the you... text that came back hours later from her. Okay. I'm offended that older men uh, send me books. Okay. And tell but me what I mean, I need to Michael, think. Michael, at this point. <laughs> No, 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 no. But here, this is the, no, this, like I said, let me give you three, let me give you three examples. Okay. I wouldn't even go on three examples. This is the thing. This is this person's MO. And okay. she's not alone. She's not alone. I know what you're she's, saying in terms she's, of. She's offended because like, I can't believe you'd say these words. I can't believe that you would think that. She got offended at one point with another friend, a feminist friend, because it's like, hey, you know, when we use these words, like the patriarchy. Well, what words did you use? I don't understand. What did you what say? What words did I use? Oh, so when I talked about the patriarch, I was like, hey, you know, like, I think that um, I think that maybe we should discuss coming up with like a better word to describe this because the patriarchy lumps all um, men. No, we've had this conversation. We yes. strongly disagree about the terminology and etymology of the word. And I, I, I do not think that when someone says the patriarchy, they mean all men that's not okay what so this is the means. thing noah 
you are correct. I agree with you. I think that most people don't think that way, but some people, this girl well, thinks. It can't affect everyone. Everyone's going to take No, I own. understand, but I think that there's enough dumb people on the planet. Like when I say dumb, I mean it like they're just dumb to these ideas. They're dumb to looking into it. They don't understand the big picture. When they hear feminism, what they hear is like they just hear feminism. I, hear I agree female. with this. This is a fair they hear point. This is a they fair hear point. like this is older a fair point. men. Yes. And so they, they don't need to do any more research. They're done. They heard men suck. That's fair. So so I'm like, hey, it's not men that suck. It's it's like it's this powerful group. It's this classist group that suck. You know, not and it's not all people that are powerful in money. It's like a very small group. It's those people that again, if you look at it in the spiritual war, it's like there's gonna be people from the bottom that are really hateful and controlling <laughs> but, but and manipulative. Michael, you do realize, at least for the past twenty five hundred years or so, those powerful people have almost exclusively been men, right? Well, you know yes that. And no. no, not yes no. There were matriarchal societies that did the same thing before. We don't know. We what do. Happened. We oh, do know. No, listen, Noah. Noah, we have not traveled in a space and time machine to see which civilization succeeded and which ones failed. Yes, we. What are we you talking about? What? We of course we do. We know if we well, unless we're classifying as a failed civilization as one that no longer exists. That to exactly. me would be well, we failed. We don't know if there's if there had been any. We don't know. What do you like, mean? Yes, we do. What? <sighs> Do the Mayans exist anymore? Do the Aztecs exist? Do the Incans? There could have been all that I'm saying is there could have been like small listen, all that I'm saying, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm hundred percent right. Just so you know, I'm not saying like I know, I know, I know. Okay. I'm saying that as far as we know, there could have been small enclaves of women. There like, are left. today there hold, are. Hold on. <laughs> there are. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Strongly. There could have been there some are. uh what are those things called? The the Amazonian women? Amaz- and uh um, Amazonian women? Maybe some of those failed. We don't know. We, they did fail. The, there were, the matriarchal society, kind of its death throes coincided. This was like observably so, um, at least it, for the Abrahamic religions, like 2,500 to 3,000 years ago. Now, before that, in um, other traditions, like Eastern ones, men also predominantly ran things. However, Joseph Campbell did some really good work. It was a, it was a book that was published after he was died, but it was a book called Goddesses. It's really fucking awesome that goes through a lot of these uh, chronological evolutions and falling of matriarchal societies. And no one would say that the matriarchal societies were better and or worse. That's not what's being said. There's no conjecture about that. People can make those arguments if they want to, but we knew that they existed before what became the dominant patriarchal system, which we are still in the midst of at this point. So, I mean, this is not like arguing for gender or against. These are just observable facts and certain laws and codices and just systems that emerged from this system that we call the patriarchy are, are are attached to it. And they they do mean the same things, right? This is this is typically can be dissected in, in a lot of different ways, socially, culturally, scientifically, all these things. But basically we know this happened. This isn't like up for debate at the end of the day. These well si- so 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 this is the thing. So again, I want to go back into that's I get what you're saying. Um this is the thing that that I'm I'm playing with and you just have to really have an open mind to try to understand and it's like it's not it, there's a, like a lot of triggering things with this stuff. I have you a know? pretty open mind, it's, you know that. It's really I, I guess the reason why I say this because it's like I think people along the path to understanding this like this view, it's triggering because they're immediately like um you're using how do you put it? Okay, I'll just I'll just go down the path. Go down the path. So you have these like let's not call them like uh, powerful. Okay, well, let's just call them like like the, the 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 at the very top of the pyramid. You know, you have very wicked. Men. What pyramid is this? What pyramid? This is like a hierarchy, like uh, the the, the power social hierarchy of power, the power hierarchy. Okay. At the like, and then from there, you probably have um, you know, like his buddies and uh, the women that are like in that crowd. Because sure. he's going to have friend, you know, like either a lover, a wife, and some fr- like yeah, women that sure. he gets along with, and then that. So that crowd is like this ruling crowd, and it's the face of it is this one person, but it's more of like a clique. That's oligarchy, at the top. you could say, sure. Yeah, 
so now you you roll down and you have like you know the, all of the middle class like from the upper middle class to the lower middle class and at the very bottom of it you just have people getting shit on you have the slaves and you know like you have the the women that are getting raped and the women that are being terrorized and you have the women that um are being spit on in the streets and blah 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 you also have like the men that are really doing like all this really hard ass work uh that are doing like the majority of the labor that the that they're building the buildings and they're dying and there's they're they're fighting for what just to survive almost okay and so what happens what i've been finding is that these offended people these offended like oh men you know those kind of people like the patriarchy it's their answers to go to they completely forget that there's a and they see it through their world view it's like you know most of these are women and you have like a, a few men that are like this as well um and the men, I feel like a lot of them are people that are in the middle to upper middle class that sure, will be sure, like, ah, oh, sure, men sure. suck. They're forgetting this whole crowd of working class people that are being summed up in the in the patriarchy inside of the, the, the mind of, of a lot of those men and those women. They're not looking at these people as like the ones who are just doing the, the hard work and really aren't. They're not bad people. They're not yeah, bad people. They're I, I not hear a, you. A, a I hear part you. of the problem. But they're being but they're being treated like they are part of the problem. They're being treated like they're getting they're, lumped in with the bit people who are maybe uh, and they part have of no this process. chance. They of just want to like supply, you know, like food on the table for their wife, right, right, right. for I, their kids. And and so so my thing is is that when you look at these like dumb fuck people, you know the the dumb fuck people are the ones that just hear the word patriarchy, they they're done. They heard feminism, patriarchy, feminism is for women, patriarchy is for men. They look at it as like oh at the top is like this is all ran by evil men. All men are evil, and then they're done. And then what they'll do is they'll be in a confirmation bias silo. Sure. Where they're looking to confirm that men are bad, which men is are easy bad. to and do. Any any way you dice it, women are bad, men are bad, blacks are bad, Jews are bad. Like it's if you get into that silo, yes. it's an echo chamber. So, so what totally. I'm getting at is, can we please the the intellectuals, the smart people in the crowd, could we please please come up with a new word or a new way of framing this? so that we can move forward so that we don't have because those women and those men become very vocal and like i had a buddy that was on a job and he um he was on a job and he was the is an all-female office at 50 plus women and he was as a um he was a what do you call it um a consultant mm -hmm. and they had two maybe three men in the entire office and they were in a meeting and then something came up and then uh, new facts came in. So he interjected mm -hmm. um, like something that they weren't aware of. And then the woman stopped him right there in the middle of the meeting with like 10 women. It was just like, you need to stop mansplaining to all of us. Right. And it was a real thing. And he's I, I was like, dude, you should have. I was like, you should have pulled the Asian card. Like, you're only doing this because I'm Asian. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> but, you know, the, the these are like these are wicked people that are out there that are using this, this terminology. And I think that yeah, I you know, think that's smart a, see, people, there's a jump you're making there that I think would what? be worth your examining that to go from people being overly sensitive or misappropriating their anger or rage at mansplaining, mm -hmm. even if it's just someone explaining and it has nothing to do with gender dynamics Calling them wicked is a huge leap from that point. Okay, you know that's what I fair. mean. And but that's, let's get back to yeah. let's, okay, so that's fair. I get that. But let's go back into like what the point of what I'm saying is. Okay, there are people that are using this terminology and they've stopped their thinking and they're in their silo, and they're just men are bad, men are bad, men this are bad. From men are everywhere, bad. I see this everywhere though, right? If you can zoom out from that, yeah, for but a you're second, in a silo. Uh, no, Michael, just for a second, zoom out <laughs> from all of the silos and take the bird's eye view and you see that this is happening across all different socioeconomic, racial, all these different spheres. This is just what's happening. It seems to me that this is what's happening. I see people getting more kind of, they're basing their identity on either the counter identity of something that's happening or, or 
opposing it or by believing in something so much that it shapes immediately almost kind of like this reactive behavior when something crosses across their screen or their consciousness. So, I mean, I, I, I definitely get what you're saying. And I want to examine the kind of the dynamics of the the men versus women one, because I hear that's emerging from what you're talking about. But I mean, this is just as a meta phenomenon. It seems like this is something that's happening culturally and societally. And and I don't think it's a good thing, to be honest, at this point. So continue. I, I, I think it stems from, by the way, to the audience, I'm really sorry that I'm like, I know that my vibes are really, really intense right now. <laughs> <laughs> and if you could put a disclaimer in the intro that I understand that I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not like love and peace in this one. It's like, I'm, I'm coming, you know, it's like I'm coming in with um, a mindset of like, there's like really hard things that we need to like really push forward. And, and I, I like I, that. I'm starting to understand why like a lot of people that are in the sphere that are understanding this are getting like, kind of getting um testy because it's very hard to stay calm when yeah. you're you're really seeing like the family unit um the global family unit all the way down to the the actual family units kind of being broken apart heavily and turned into this this muck that is happening around us and but no, anyway uh, yeah yeah the thing i think is that it's the, with the 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 gross stuff in the the, the icky stuff that's like not making it um, nice for everybody is a lot of it comes from the hyperbolic statements and um, I have to work on it myself. I think I don't everyone catch myself does. doing it, it but I think that yeah. that's that it, it's, it's this thing that we have to acknowledge because you know, we were talking yesterday that a lot of it's to do with nuance Yeah, and I agree, but we have to acknowledge as well that there's a lot of people the majority of the people we live, you and I, probably a lot of your listeners live in a world where life is a lot easier for us. We're not hustling a day job and then we just want to go see our friends and then we want to get out. Um, we're, 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 we're not, they're not, they're not really looking into information and ideas and they're not, well, you'd be you surprised. I mean, they're, they're just, I mean, dude, you'd be surprised. Yeah, yeah, they you'd they be surprised. do, but, but there's enough people because I'm seeing it like personally i'm seeing it not just like oh here's one or two but i i see it like daily where they're not looking into what patriarchy is or they're not looking into feminism and which wave we're in they're just kind of like oh that's a cool thing i get it and they're running with it and it's the baby boomers are bad or the millennials are so stupid um mm -hmm. you know the as like a meme, a meme. It's more a meme than anything that's actually foundationally accurate or examined. I I, I totally understand that. That does yeah, seem to be what's going on. Yeah, that's like a part of it. And then so the offensive part comes in where when you – I sent you that college humor video yeah, yesterday. Yeah. And the – I this is going to sound stupid, but I really think if people watch college humor more, they would relax. Because they, they're really – they are the comedians on point right now in this culture. Like they are killing it. They are so on point. They're taking every issue and they're breaking it apart. And I don't know like, – whatever side you're on, they have a video like to really help you understand like to comfort you. A friend – literally a friend the other day was suicidal, um, like really going through a hard thing. We were mm -hmm. talking back and forth and she was in Europe and um, – I sent her some college humor videos and she was like immediately just calmed down and she's like, okay, I'm not crazy, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, it's funny. Anyway. I have, I have people yeah, from all over the world too, uh, basically having similar issues, not suicidal, but grappling with how to deal with what is going on. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I don't, obviously you and I don't have any, hard answers on this stuff because it's still emerging. But I mean, my personal way of dealing with this is just trying to weed. get as much. Your way's <laughs> weed. <laughs> Partially, but you'd, you'd be surprised, man. Like there were, there was uh, this past year, there were several times where I took very long stretches from, from weed and much to my surprise in some ways, like didn't really alter the way I approach a lot of this stuff. I was like, damn, maybe this is just how I am. And I just really like weed. <laughs> so you'd be surprised. But uh, my point is, this is that 
there's no my way of dealing with it truthfully outside of weed is I try to investigate things that don't make sense to me. And then I try to understand what potentially that person's perspective and intention may be like what brought them to that point. And if it's usually something that's nuanced or complex or a little more dig beneath the surface, that tends to shine through. And I mean, I think of this like the best example I have of this is there's a transgender woman, um, Natalie Wynn, who goes by ContraPoints on YouTube oh, and I know Twitter. Her, yeah. And she's really, really fucking awesome. She gets down to the I'm the opposite. I'm annoyed with a lot of stuff that she says. Well and and to me And that's fair. I, I get that. I, I'm not annoyed by what she says because it's an issue that quite frankly, as a non transgender person, as not knowing many people who have been transgender outside of like encounters or acquaintances, um, it's not something I think about a lot. But I hear about it because I know there are people who are affected by it. I know there are people who go through this. It doesn't seem like an easy thing to go through as an individual um, and in a lot of other social situations. So I was interested in, I'm like, what is the pronoun situation about? And basically what I found through her very well thought out examples and kind of just like nuance and logic breakdown, what really shown shine through for me is that like, this is someone who is just bringing their personal experience and kind of compassionate wisdom to a situation. It's not arguing necessarily, even if she disagrees with someone like Ben Shapiro about how to pronounce someone's name if they prefer to be called something. It's not blanket, only do this. This is the only situation that's going on. It's saying, hey, look at this from if this was someone in your family, if it was you, if it was a situation where if you acted a little bit kind, not because you had to, but because it's the nice thing to do. That that really is an important facet with all of this stuff because there's a lot of different sections of society <clears throat> and culture that are now interacting with each other that didn't happen before. In a lot of ways, so is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. The what the sentiment that she's getting at. I agree that like treat people like you would treat family. Um, and there's two splinters with that, which is one. You still fuck with your family, you know, like you still mess around with them. Like yes, you still but play late, with them, but you don't, and you can't yes. get butt hurt. But the other side too is that you you treat your family like that. Um, but you know the, the the message, the other messages that she's putting out there, which I'll disagree with, is like she's like if you're not, if you don't have sex with a um, a trans woman who still has a penis, then you're transphobic. It's like I I don't want to. That's not being me that's being not, transphobic. She didn't say that. Yeah, she was the one. Wasn't she the one that said that? I can oh, go back and look. No, no, no. No no one is saying that's insane. Yes, she did. She's saying that if you... What did you say? That if you don't have sex with a transgender person, you're transphobic? That's No one would say that. That's nope. like saying if oh I... Oh, my God. I will find the video and I'll send it to you. No, I don't. Uh, that That's and there's, so, totally insane. Yeah, that's the thing. Like you'll, uh, she didn't say... Yeah. And what, what happened where I found out about that actually was from the trans community. They were like outraged. Yes, about there this. are they many were, there are many people who they were like, you can't call people transphobic just because they don't want to have sex with you. No, I, I don't knowing her videos and seeing, you know, a fair amount of them and, and her as a person. I doubt the veracity of that statement in context. Do you know what I mean? Like that? No, that's it's insane for how well thought out so many of her points and arguments are. I, I just. I don't think that that is something that's correctly attributed. At least maybe to her. it's not her. Maybe it's another one. Let me. Yeah, sure. I'll, There's I'll, a I'll lot of inflammatory I'll, I'll people. Send it to you and then you can clear it up in the intro. People, whether I'm right or wrong. Yeah, yeah. People stake out or at the end of this. Yeah, whatever sure. You want to do. Yeah, people stake out hard stances and opinions on a lot of different issues, and there's more issues than ever that are accessible right now. So I don't think we should look at the outliers in terms of how these things are judged i think for most people when like if you're like me as a straight white guy who has not encountered many trans people and a them among their social circle you may not have any knowledge of any of this stuff so getting level-headed kind of insights into it i think does become important um, which is the only antidote that I can think of for kind of like puncturing the filter bubbles that a lot of people find themselves in on both sides of the fence. A lot of my friends who are comedians, like this is what we talk about, like where is the nuance, right? Like where is like the the outrage relative to a joke? 
And it's not a question that I think is fully answerable, but I do think that if the empathetic quality isn't a part of it, then it kind of weakens the argument against not being offended. Does that make sense? Say that last part again. I'm saying that if empathy isn't a part of the interaction in terms of Mm -hmm. you shouldn't be offended, if there's not some empathetic quality to that, then it weakens the overall argument that people are too offended. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the thing is, okay, yes. Where I'm getting at with this, though, is that when you're with your friends and your family, like you bust each other's balls. And like I bust your balls hard, like a lot. You know, like I, I like you because it's like you can you can handle it. You can yes, take it. Sure. If I felt that you were really like crumbling you don't um, see me crying in the shower later that day, Michael. That's true. I don't. <laughs> I'm genuinely I'm jerking I'm, off thinking yeah. about me at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tears of joy. That's what I meant. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's sad tears, but still jerking off because you're still thinking about me. It's weird. It's really uncomfortable. My own personal crying game. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that goes back to that college humor video they sent. So for the listeners, it's like a video where um this one of the the this is two characters um kind of like scoping out this could you explain it because you explain things better it, it's just kind of i mean to be fully transparent i didn't think it was that funny i thought it was clever but i wasn't like this is like really funny to me oh it's not uh, yes yeah, thing it's not hilarious yeah it's not funny haha ha. it's clever uh, it's just basically That's their material an it's outrage clever. circle so each person is giving a somewhat legitimate grievance and why you shouldn't call someone this or say this term and then following it up with a equally if not more offensive term for someone else in the group and it was just kind of this outrage circle oh wait which one did you watch that's what you you sent me which one did i send you you sent me um oh god damn it i sent you the wrong one okay making bigoted jokes because you care that's what you sent me yeah, I'm making big jokes because you care. And this is the one where it's like uh, the guy and the girl are like hiding behind the bush. and they're watching Oh, oh their- yeah, yeah. That's the other one. I watched one after that. Yeah, yeah. I watched a couple of them. So I, I didn't. Okay. So yeah. The, I, you're, yeah, that's a different video. That's different. The, so it's they're hiding behind the bush and there's this. Um, you, please put a link in the, the show notes. Don't tell me what to do, so, man. I'll do what I want. Up. I'll put links where I want to put links. Okay, well. It's my show. You pause and watch this video, please. <laughs> and then you'll hear me fuck this thing up. I'm, t- I'm not talking to you, sorry, the audience. I got it. Google it since Noah won't put in the link because it's so hard. Uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 I have a hard time with show notes myself, so I'm not judging you. Uh, I don't take any judgment. So the the couple that they're watching, it's like basically, um, it's like a, a gay guy and a straight girl, and he's trying to get her to say a gay joke. Like the gay guy is trying to get the straight girl because they're 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 friends, and he's just doing everything he can he like he's feeding her lines yeah, he's like feeding her lines and like it's like there's obvious punch lines that she's just not taking the bait on yeah and the the couple in the the bush are like the the guy is really upset he's like um he's a gay guy too and he's like really upset because he's like come on when is she gonna just take the line and make a gay joke like when is she gonna do it and he's really upset and he's explaining to the girl that's hiding behind the bush with him uh that Look at look like we expect you. We expect you to make jokes with us. We expect you to do it at one point, and that's when we know that you're friends. Like that's when we know that we've overcome like all the homophobia, racism, sexism, all that stuff. Like at one point, you care so much that you can actually joke about the stuff that used to that could have hurt you before. Sure. And so that's you know we do that with families, like within your family. It's at one point like you you bond on saying things that you know that and you do it with your friends like it's what we do and what's happened is people become so offended that and they become so de- de- like pulled out from each other that if they overheard someone making a gay joke not understanding the context of it they're just going to to, to get angry and say you can't say that you can't do that and um yeah, I mean, I th- there's this? there's a level of intimacy that's implied there in the relationship where I think that's like the defining thing. If if you're making a I, like I used to make I, I had at one point I found two of my good, good friends who are close to me physically like 
in my area in college were Korean. So I think this was at the same time that there was this horrible UVA tragedy where like a Korean kid, Virginia Tech, like shot a bunch of people. I was close enough with my friends that I was like, guys, I'm getting a little bit nervous. I can't go and say that joke to a large group of Korean people at the Korean market because they don't know who the fuck I am. They don't know the context of me having Korean friends. I just oh, like, so that's but important. You, this is the thing. It's like how you deliver it. You can because it's, I it's understand. like how stand so you like, can. Like I I'm saying just... you can. I'm not saying. Listen, listen. I'm I'm using a poor analogy. If you go in there and you say it in a lighthearted way, but if I just come in and start saying, "Oh, I gotta be careful from them Koreans," like everyone's gonna be like, "Holy shit, get this maniac out of here!" So there's there is intimacy or implied social connection that allows that you know maybe offensive thing in another context to be palatable. So that's important to keep in mind. I I agree with that. Okay. All right. Good for you. <laughs> Good for me. Good for me. What? That you hear green? No, I'm just fucking with you. I'm <laughs> fucking with you. Uh, no, I, I agree. I agree. I I agree. All right. I don't right. have anything to add to that one. All I, right. Um, or to, to tease apart with that one. No, I mean, <laughs> soul. The, the only yeah. reason I bring I it up is well. I think the only reason I bring it up is because I think, like, uh, one of the most recent examples I spoke about this a couple times on the podcast is this Louis C.K. thing. The, uh, the jokes he was making about Parkland and some of, I forget the other things. And I remember seeing it flash across my screen and immediately getting outraged, immediately being like, what a dick. You were outraged? I was outraged. And then I thought about it for like another 10 minutes and I'm like, you know what? Am I outraged? Like he's definitely like, this is a pretty stupid thing to do in the context of what's going on and maybe media relations, not that wise. But then I spoke to one of my comedian <laughs> friends and he's like, listen, my take on it. And he's like, you know, it sounds bad if you just read it on the page. But if you listen to it, if you listen, it sounds it like a comedian. And he's like, there wasn't he wasn't having any favors done for him because there was this like clearly like loud alt bro kind of white guy laughing maniacally in the, in the microphone. But he's wait, like, wait, 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 sorry. You can say bro. Yeah. But I would. How do you know he was alt? It, I was told because he was lit the way he was laughing at the jokes. They were oh, like, okay. because the material, as far as I you can were tell, told, you were told that this person, okay, just, I, I'm just saying like, I don't going, know that he was yeah. all right, but the jokes and the, like, for instance, just to be clear, I didn't he think could have been conservative and people would have called him all. Okay. That's the conservative. Problem too, is that right. If someone's conservative, they're immediately called all. If you're centrist, you're alt. Like I would say that I'm liberal, uh, progressive with a centrist poll. And, but what does um, that even really mean, Michael? I mean, there's it so means many that, different... like I think that like when we talk about abortion, I'll say that um, I think that it it is murder. I think that it's bad. I th but I think that women should have the right. And I think it's awful that women have to go through that. And I think that it should it is their choice. And it would be nice if we lived in a civilization where we didn't have to kill babies well there might always have to be a situation where so that would be where i'm i'm coming that would be an example of someone who would be like in a situation i'm at where i'm i'm compassionate toward the women who are having them and i i like i feel for them uh, but i also feel for the life and i feel for the fathers who don't really get the full can the full say on what's going to happen with the you know well with do you what think be that, their child i know but do you think that they should in all situations have a say in that if there's some like medical danger to the woman carrying the child. Oh, a medical danger the you know, a man's going to be like, yeah, this is the smartest thing to do. But if you look at the statistics, most of the reasons why aren't, it, I'm not uh, saying that I'm, I'm, I'm not like, even I pulled saying... up the data yesterday if you want. And but I can just tell you is, like the, just to be clear about <laughs> this is the thing I'm pulling up data, dude, look who the fuck I became. Yeah. But the... <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is this is the behavior that starts to concern me when you're pulling up data on a, you know, abortions. I mean, here's the thing, man. Like, listen, I don't. I, yes, something is being terminated during an abortion, but to straight up call it murder at every single stage, I think walks a line that becomes a perilous line to walk if you're not a woman. Because it's ultimately, it is something that takes place in their body, right? Like that's yes, but no, it. But yes, that's but, that's where it kind of begins and ends for me. Just just because I know that if I was a woman, <laughs> maybe this just makes me selfish. 
I would know that like I probably wouldn't want other people telling me what I can and can't do. Assuming I'm not ass- you, that you can't do it. I'm not you saying can do it. That's I'm not my saying whole thing. That- I think that they should have the full right to do it. I or, have a nuanced or, opinion. Okay, a, a nuanced opinion is that you wish we lived in a society where there weren't need for abortion, which I think everyone And, and would until agree we with. live in that that society, women should full on have 100% right for it. Okay. Okay. Right. So we're So we walk this backwards and then the actual process itself but what is the I data that, related to? That's, I mean. So the the data where I started to pull this up, I just was curious about it. Um, like, because you know the, the the narrative that we get all the time is like she was raped, she has no money, or her life is in danger. So, no, 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 no. Those are the extreme examples that are used to highlight how restrictive uh, pre- uh, abortion legislation. What doesn't take into yeah. account people aren't saying people no one just to be clear people do not think that the majority number one reason is medical emergency the the number one oh, reason but- for no people don't think that people don't think that people don't think that they think that if you use that hyperbolic example of these outlier cases to show how a generalized sweeping legislation prohibiting certain types of abortions would really impact certain people which we know that this stuff happens that's why it's bad also I don't think the amount of women who are going out there, like no one wants to get an abortion. Even if you just look at it from like a fiscal point, no one wants to go through exactly. it. Exactly. So it's yeah. not like people are going out there like, hey, let me rack up as many abortions as I can. It's a very traumatic process. I mean, there's there's an emotional resonance, a psychic Sorry. unconscious resonance. Yeah. Like it's not this fun loving. No yeah. one. Sorry, just go back. We shouldn't say no one. We should no, acknowledge that there's probably a handful of women that really are uh, fucked up. Three. There's three. Yes, yeah, sure, three, Noah. sure, sure. But th- again, you don't have to get that specific when we're talking about these things. You don't have I'm to count. With you, dude. I know, Come I on. know, I know. But my point is, is like th- that's that's an important nuance too. Is that it's not like people are presenting the only reason women get abortions is for a medical emergency or they were raped. It's because. For a whole host of other reasons, it's not practical. It's not doesn't make sense. They don't want it. It wasn't in their plans. There's a whole bunch of reasons, but it doesn't diminish that a so, choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, that's and that's the whole thing too. Is it like it? It is like so. That's why the like if you can't acknowledge that it's murder, then you're also saying to the women that are doing it, like they don't want to. They don't necessarily want to do this. They feel bad. It's like it's traumatic. Like they, we all know when are very close to many women that have had it i would never say that they shouldn't do it by acknowledging it what it is i know like i can say like but you're not going to shout in their it's, face it's murder either is my point yeah but then i'm not yeah i'm not like you, you trust it's them murder. no you trust I'm them saying, to like, deal with those internal process yeah. where they were forced yes. or they they had to make a decision to do this and i'm not i'm not belittling them i'm not saying that i'm saying like they had to take a hard choice. I could not do it. Like it's like the men that go into war. You don't know that. And you don't they know have that though. You don't murder. This, and we, but you don't no. know it. You don't know it, Michael. That's the whole point where I think a lot of this stuff gets conflated. I don't with know the, what. You don't know what you would do in that situation. You're not a woman. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why, like, I have mad respect for the women that that. Not that I have respect. Like, yeah, you go get them abortions, but I have respect for the fact that, like, the women that have gone through it. It's like I know that it's it's traumatic. It's really hard, and I feel for them, and like my heart goes out to them. And because I I don't know what it's like. I don't think that they go into it like super excited. But if we can't call it what it is, we can't start looking for a bigger solution. Like, how can we? It's like we know that men go off to war, and they have to murder people. And people are like, oh, you know, there's a there's a a common idea lately over the past few decades that these men are murderers and they're baby killers and stuff and it's like they were just again like i have a lot of military friends and they they did it because it was like not the same as abortion but it's like in a similar thing it's like this is just their karma this is like this is their experience and this is what they it's a path forward for them to get out of the the projects or whatever yeah and, and which is almost somebody, designed they deal with the military yeah, heavily call... recruits in impoverished areas and people in working class areas because they yeah, know those and people. So yeah, they okay. didn't have a shot of somebody who's coming from the professional class living in an urban area. And sometimes that happens, but it's very rare. And so then they're, you know, like shunned and like you're awful. 
and they're doing kind of a service force, just as those women are doing a service force in a way too, by not bringing a child into their life that's going to cause them more uh, it's emotional, more, financial, whatever it is. Stress yeah, 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 yeah. Like, absolutely. The great thing about the pill and abortions was that when they became legalized, is that they really, you know, crime dropped dramatically afterwards because people were able to like set aside having a child during um yeah you know when, it, you, you when they shouldn't saying, when they shouldn't be having kids most likely or they felt that they yeah shouldn't be. i get it but but so so when i say this and i say like it's it's a murder you get what i'm saying like it's like it's I, like I a get triggering what you're saying. word they're they're I but mean, it's true it's it here's the distinction that i would make for a lot would of you people. not say it's truth that it's a murder no because I don't think most people look at when they step on an ant, and I'm not comparing an ant to a baby. I'm using an analogy that as that's an act of murder. Is it murder because you snuffed out living life? If you want to categorize it like that, yeah. When you pull up a plant out of the ground to do cook it as a vegetable, is that murdering it because you're detaching it from its life force and it can no longer grow? And it also remembers the context. Like, is this person intending to murder? out of malice or hate or premeditation is it murder if like a mother okay. oh, let me ask you this question what word would you use instead of murder i would use that they got an abortion they aborted the no, that's life. not a word like it they is. killed it they aborted the life the life that right. was growing, it was aborted. It was terminated. It was finished. Okay. It wasn't. Listen, I, again, I don't think that abortion think it, is something people are seeking out wanting to do. I think these are difficult situations that are <sighs> truthfully life and death situations, yeah. if you want to call it that. But to use a charged word like murder probably isn't going to do much good when, in the conversation relative to the amount of harm and confusion it can bring into it. Does that make sense? I I agree. I, I think because I'm coming, I, I agree. I agree a hundred percent that it's like, it's because, especially because like the group that's used it in the past have been like pretty intense. You know, it's the, the people standing outside with pickets of um, posters of murdered babies and yeah. all that shit. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that, so, so I, I think that, yeah, it's coming with a charged word, um, just like the patriarchy is a charged word. Yeah, but I, <laughs> did, no, no, that's not the same. It is. Michael, this is a problem that I you think, can't have one this is where other, I get concerned like, about the red yeah. pilling and the alt writing and the moderates and the centrist stuff. Those aren't, that's not an equal comparison. The patriarchy is an observable social and hierarchical construct. You can look at different facets of it and say, yes, this is what makes up a patriarchy. Murder is not as nuanced as the word patriarchy. It's 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 silly to even compare those two things. It doesn't. It's not murder is a simple act that we have defined as something that's even in a law that says this is murder. These people have found you guilty, not of manslaughter, not of some lesser crime, but of murder. So it's something that has a very well-defined place in our society. Patriarchy is a codified system of things. It's it. That's my point. Like it's not like the word came up out of nowhere now because it has a mimetic quality to it and people are using it indiscriminately, it doesn't mean that it isn't an actual thing. And this is where like kind of the blurring of facts and cherry picking things I think gets weird. It's it's like this this is not something that is really up for debate. We can agree that people use it recklessly, the word patriarchy, and misapprehend what it actually means. And in the same way that when people say masculine and fem feminine, when talk talking about archetypal energies, if they only think about penis and vagina and genders, they're missing a broader point. So there's multiple things going on there, but you can't compare the word murder to patriarchy in terms of how they're being used does does that i mean i hope i i i hope i made for myself that's pretty clear i think it may I, I i agree it makes a lot of sense what you're saying i i just think that um this is where it gets really i told you yesterday it's really uncomfortable in this space that i'm in right now because i opted to make i made a conscious decision to begin looking at the other side and so yes. and that's based on i i told you um the MIT study where um, they took Twitter. Yeah. Did I tell you about this? So they you took didn't, Twitter yeah. journalists, and it's like uh, if you look at conservatives, 
the conservatives would follow both conservatives and liberals. If you look at the liberals, they'll only look at liberals. And as I talk to friends who don't live in New York and L.A., uh, and again, L New York was the one that really like changed me and started making me look at friends as possible victims of society's ills and all this other stuff and blah, 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 rather than looking at them as like individuals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's in that, that, that wacky ass mind. Um, as I started talking to my, my, uh, friends that like, that are living in back in Spokane, living throughout the rest of the country. And I would ask them just a simple question. Um, if you were to guess, uh, conservatives, what would they listen to? They'd say conservatives and liberals. And I say, what about liberals? They say just liberals. And I'd say, well, why, where do you come up with that information? They're like, dude, I have friends that are conservatives and I have friends and you've been a liberal for all these years and you'd never listen to us. Mm -hmm. And not just you, but liberals just wouldn't listen to us. Mm -hmm. um, I think this, I've heard this from a lot of different things. And I, and I think I, I actually really get the sentiment. And I think that's happened. I mean, in, in this local community, a friend who's been here building stuff for a few years was saying that there used to be a time like in the before the 2000s where there were liberals and Republicans and Democrats and they would all kind of come together as a community and they might not agree about certain things. But there did come a point where the liberal kind of progressive, quote unquote, Democrat leaning mm -hmm. people came in and kind of took everything over and just shunned everyone else and were like this is how yeah. you do it this is what's going on and he said he saw 15 16 20 years ago what led to this shocking trump victory and this current kind of identity politics things happening so i want to be clear that there is validity to what you're saying and one of the reasons i brought up that frederick Douglass thing in the beginning is because that really is resonant with me that people could objectively agree that something is wrong but then have radical differences amongst themselves about the specific way it was wrong or the way we mm -hmm. should go about so it, it's never as simple and i think that is something that's happened this cynical dismissive view that has kind of been a quality of both coasts of this country certainly isn't helping anyone it's not making things better I, we we definitely agree on that it, yeah and i guess i guess we're um i'm what well, like i was getting with that too is that this is uncomfortable for me because i've been you know i've been beating the drum when when trump got elected the first thing i was like okay this is clearly like i'm trying to like be the like try to find the the bright in the whole thing you know like i was me too i yeah. was like so you know and I was like, this is the, this is the sign, this is the last, uh, this is the last shake of the patriarchy, you know, like the thing everybody yeah, was saying, I was just sure. doing the whole thing. And, you know, I really believed it. I really wanted to bring away this like toxic energy and blah, blah, blah. Mm. And, and so here I am as someone who's been, you know, my, my podcast bringing on so many feminists on there. So, and you know, looking at Me Too movement, I look back at how within my industry, nobody would talk about how the models were being treated. And I brought yes. them on and gave them a voice before as a voice. Like totally. I've been an activist on my on my podcast uh, and without a my doubt. work. Without a doubt. And being a provocateur with my work and like really like being on a, the progressive side. So for me to listen to conservative, a conservative angle and then deliver it back to my, cons my liberal friends, yeah. I'm like, I mean, I feel uncomfortable. I, because I appreciate it because it's something you're giving us an opportunity, at least me, to talk to someone I know and respect and care about and hear what their thoughts are on this. I think too often that we don't have that connection and bridge available and that just makes things worse. So I get why it's uncomfortable for you because if people are meeting you with like, hey, you're a fucking idiot. That's not very fun. <laughs> not only that, but I don't want to slip into um, populism, fascism, Marxism. I don't want to slip into these like extremes. I don't want to slip into. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and I think the thing is within the 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 liberal spiritual kind of crowd, it's it's like um, it's a it's a privileged crowd for the most part. Not all, but a lot of them. It's like it's a very privileged space. I couldn't um, agree more. I couldn't agree and, more. And they're they're they become like so clueless to what the other group is going through, which is the most people aren't in this privileged class. And so the vast majority. If you have time, yeah. if you have time to like, I was looking up the the pronouns at one point, um, and there's like a pronoun if you identify differently. Uh, what was it? It was like if you identify differently when you're near different bodies of water, there's a pronoun 
for that. Wait, what is it? Because I'm going to start using it. That sounds awesome. <sighs> I don't that know. There's like another fun. one. That's like what here. about one if this for the phases of the moon? Because I want to do that one. You. That, that's the thing is you could I'm doing and, it, and then it's like, it's at the point where it's like if you in this thing you can do that because you have the time and space to do that. Some people that are just like trying to build fucking bridges and shit and trying to like well, put, get the roads in order. Uh, I think they don't. If 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 you're a kid that grows up trans in um, Ohio or something, right? You're going to, it's going to be really hard for you. And I think it's really good that, that there's all these people kind of explaining like, Hey, there's, you know, differences in pronouns and genders and, and the way that people identify. I think that's really great. And for the most part, if like, if, if your buddy is all of a sudden saying like transitioning into a, a girl, it might be confusing, but if it's your buddy, it's your buddy. And you're going to just be like, all right, you're a girl now. You're a woman now. I think that's like the general, like with what's happening in 2019. By 2019, I think most of, most of, across the country, that's how people would handle it. Mm. Um, so I think that a lot of the good messages are coming out from the liberal, but the liberal side. But I think that some people have been so yes focused on being like you. you everybody must now, and if you don't do this, there's a lot of yes, people yes, that, that yes, were in the yes. trans movement that are like annoyed now that they're actually leaving their pronouns behind and say stop calling me they them you can just call me she now because i don't i realize it's so toxic over there within that space just as it was toxic within the conservative space and i think that one of the ways to do this is i think a lot of liberals and people with time need to buck up and they need to do the work and start looking at the other side because i think that it's it's a slippery slope and we all need each other as we go through this because we're not going to get to the other side of this by liberals just listening to I one agree. or two friends by in conservatives keep getting beat beaten up for shit or by uh, it's no, no, not, Michael, Michael, I don't think that I'm the, there's a lot of people that went before me through this. And I God bless them, man, because it, I can't imagine what it would have been like to be four years ago to be one of these people that, that left the, yeah. you know, like that ventured out outside the liberal silo and started to look into this shit well you, you know, know i i i my only taste of this is that i have been critical of obama as a president just because i feel most presidents in modern history are essentially narcissistic sociopaths as best as i can tell it's a very special type of breed even if they seem cool and i know the blowback i've gotten from friends who certain think a certain way would vehemently disagree with that but I think what you're saying and why I I really appreciate you hearing you say it is it, it that is what has to happen and I think this it does come from the left. It also comes from the right. To be fair, there is this kind of smugness. It comes from both sides. It's not party affiliated. Oh my god, affiliated. they're the most smug motherfuckers, right? I because they hilarious. think they've they think they figured yeah. out logic because they pull up their yeah. facts. Yeah, and, and you've f- got to like you can't talk to them without having facts. That's yeah, why you, you've got it's their to, like, language. When it's you're like, proof. why would you pull up facts? It's like because I want to talk with them. Of course, and it's their language. I want to get their viewpoint. Their proof. I got to speak their language. Yes, exactly. That's really important. But I mean, what you're saying is true. Like both. Everyone has to listen to other people. If you don't, you're going to be fucked. Like, for instance, let me put it this way. One of my reactions to you talking about some of this stuff with me, and I think we do still disagree on a few little things here and there. Sure. And that's fair. I love it that we can disagree and still be friends. Me too. I can still give you shit about you circumcising your kid. Yeah. Well, and you know what, Michael? You want to hear something Uh, really interesting about that conversation? I you went, decided not to circumcise No, your kid. 100% doing it. No question. My, yeah, that's what the matriarch wants. I, I know. Circumcise kid. But I <laughs> spoke to another one of my friends who I really respect and admire who grew up in a culture that is aggressively doing that. And he felt exactly like you. And I was surprised. And I think you said, ask people. And I asked someone and I I was surprised. So it is something that has more nuance and resonance than I was giving it credit to. to. So I mean, yeah, man, like I, what I was saying is, is one of my reactions to you talking about this stuff could have been like, well, Michael's a fucking idiot. I don't want to talk to him anymore. What a crazy person. I don't want to engage with him. And that would be a travesty of all travesties because what we ultimately came here and, and figured out is that we both have the exact same viewpoint. Regardless of your position and identity and what you believe in, listening and to language, other in language too and language to divide our language, yeah, yeah. But listening to other people and trying to understand their perspective and being empathetic to it is the only <laughs> way forward. It's literally the only thing we can do as a hundred percent. So yeah, man, I we're on the same. It. I'm glad that we're we're saying this because there's there's so many more pieces that we can break apart and we can discuss because 
it, but, but that is like the, the, the general lay of the land. It's, it's, it's kind of like there, there's like the, the extremist right and there's the extremist left. And I think that for years, like if you look at conservative media, we all know Fox News, it's like Fox News and then now Breitbart, right? Yeah. Well, for liberal progressive media, let's list it all off. MSNBC, CNN, um, whatever the fuck, you know, there's, it's all liberal bias. And so, so we've been fed this, this like uh, Fox bad, Breitbart bad. But those are the only, those are the only two voices. So of course there's going to be extremist yeah. things that come out of it. Um, but people have to tune in a little bit. If they're listening to 90% of, of my dad does media. that. My dad actively does that. He's liberal. We agree on almost all this stuff. Um, he has a neighbor who is very Trumpian and just he hears his opinions and doesn't agree with him, but is respectful and, you know, is friendly. But he purposely tunes in to Breitbart and Fox News to get the other perspectives. His opinion hasn't changed, but he thinks it's important to to do that. And I, I think it, it is important. So. I think it's super important because, like, you know, one of the things that happened yesterday was that uh, you heard about Trump um, is trying to. There's two articles that came out. It was fucking hilarious. Because uh, one was Trump is trying to make. Uh, hold on, I want to get the right. I want to get the the headline proper. Hold on, sorry. No problem. It is. FYI, Trump I'm literally look- baking bread. As we're yeah. talking, I'm about to put it in the oven. So, all right, it's pretty cool. <laughs> that is super cool. What yeah. kind of sourdough? No, it's uh mainly uh, just baker's flour and some wheat flour. But as a new recipe, sourdough. I'm going to. I'm gonna make rye too. I was just gonna say, make some rye. Oh my god! All right, oh, you look so for good. this. I'm putting the mic down for one second. Well, I already found it. Okay, tell me. Oh, I was. I was th- in my head, I was like, oh, maybe he'll put the headphones down. And I can talk shit about them. <laughs> uh. So the headline was from on Breitbart was Trump to launch worldwide fight to decriminalize homosexuality. And so, of course, it's like you're like, this is really great. You know, it's like a step forward. He hasn't been the best with LGBT uh, rights, you know. Um, but this is, this is at least something. This is something. And then I, I messaged a friend um, that she's very similar to me. She has been she's an artist. She's very liberal, very progressive. But she's also like trying to understand the opposing view and i was like i'm like oh jesus this will piss off some liberals so again the headline is the the the, the nut of it is he's trying to decriminalize homosexuality and the first group that ended up getting pissed off about it was out magazine Mm -hmm. and they were like don't trust trump because he's doing this and it's like couldn't you have just been like this is a maybe a good step forward it was just like don't trust him and it's like, and I think that's why people have to like look at both sides because it's like this is all that Out Magazine was doing was teaching you don't trust Donald Trump, um, which is not just Donald Trump, it's which like, is don't maybe trust not people. the just to be clear, maybe not the worst <laughs> lesson to take away from Donald well, it's Trump. Like he's he's teaching, not a trustworthy don't... person that sure, anyone can sure. agree on, whether sure. you like him or dislike him. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But, the but he was doing like, something that was them. objectively potentially positive. Um, well, I think, listen, again, that's something that you can look at with nuance, right? Out Magazine, I can imagine, would be saying something like that because some of his policies on transgender people in the military and other kind of protections that were enacted yeah. under previous administrations. So they could be saying, hey, this is kind of like a peace offering. Don't take it right now, not because we don't think it's a positive step, but because we don't trust this guy yet. He hasn't proven that he can do it, which is one of the many reactions one could have. And I get from your perspective or a lot of people's perspective, it's like, hey, well, shouldn't we at least look at it as a positive step? I mean, it is something that he's not saying we want to kill all the gay people. So, well, yeah. Yeah. Look at like it. Look at it from a, a like a someone who's a right of center who, who's um, who might be on the fence. And, you know, the, the joke I made with a friend is like, let's see how long it takes before liberals get pissed off that he's doing this. Yeah. And it was like immediately like there was I could find an article about it. But imagine someone who's like a conservative and then they just see headlines where it's like, oh, you know, if someone said that to them, like, wait till the liberals get pissed or the libtards. Wait till the libtards get pissed. What's going to happen is that they're going to immediately see that headline and they're going to it's going to be they're going to be stuck in that silo. So it's like the words and the language that 
Out Magazine could have used. I'm not a copywriter. They're clearly writing to their base. But if there were, like, if there was, like, a, if there was more conservative uh, outlets, maybe there would be a conservative gay one that would come out at one point. Hopefully that comes sure out where then they can say, like, ones. it's just that. The thing is, is that so you have to small. understand. They're not like a major outlet. Here's, here's people, something, you know. Yeah, but here's something to keep in mind, right? And this is what I tend to look at in all facets of society, from art to politics to science to all these things: is uh, names and labels are constantly changing. The Republican Party of 1842 was not the Republican Party of today. Conservative yeah. conservatism also meant something completely different than the party that holds up itself as the conservative party, the GOP right now, just from 30 years ago, fiscal, you know, austerity and not big government was a big part of what was going on. Now it's completely different. It's just, you know, we like the parts of government that help us and our cronies for the most part, you know, the parts that help other people. We're not a fan of that part. So these things are constantly shifting. And I think it's important to look at kind of a the broader underlying causes because you've brought up something a couple times now that strikes me, which is the working class people, the people who are building the buildings, who are just in the systems that have been created. And that's a very important group of people to think about. But it also cuts to the core of that if the system is broken and kind of fatally designed to oppress people, which it seems like it's doing a pretty good job of, how do we as individuals begin to upend that system? And to okay, me, so yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 you, 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 no, 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 please, please, please. Yeah, it sounds like you have a solution. No, I don't have a solution, but I know that it's probably not going to be some grand sweeping thing from the top down. That it would most totally. likely start with individual people doing exactly what you and I have been suggesting, which is talking to the other side, talking with people who disagree with you in a respectful way. Maybe you disagree on 99% of the issues, but being able to disagree peacefully and amicably is something we should all strive for. It's not always possible. If you came to me and said, hey, guess what? I think all abortion is murder and every woman who did it should be sentenced to death. Well, I would probably emphatically, we would have a much more contentious conversation, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't try to understand the other person's perspective. Mm -hmm. So I I do think that's basically where the solution is for this stuff. So uh, it's just to emphasize and underscore that again. Let me. I'm gonna let me just throw this in uh, for a second with the whole murder thing. I, I agree with you that like the word is definitely loaded. How about we say that it is a murder? No, we we I it's a form of murder. Uh, I don't agree just on play that with term. It. Just play with it. I if I just the, talk to talk to some female friends and talk to some women and play with it. I I've understand. said that openly to like female friends and women and and um who've had abortions and they're here in LA and they're definitely definitely progressive and liberal minded. And obviously, I've got some flinches from some, and then others were kind of like Joking. nodding their head, yeah. So yeah, I don't think it. that. Listen, I think for everyone, because it's, it's a language that the 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 the, the, the ones that are going to try to trigger use, and they're not going to stop using it. No, it's not going to be used. But I'm saying the purpose of using that as a trigger word probably doesn't equal or surpass its like actual making change. That's my point. Well, it's, well, it's yeah, more of a, point with, like what yeah. I'm saying is that you're gonna have what's the name of that family that protests like anytime a military uh, person Western dies or, Baptist Church yeah or, yeah yeah Westboro Westboro that's what it is yeah yeah like Westboro is always gonna be standing out there so it's like if we can just uh, like use the language it's like the same thing with the patriarchy thing the patriarchy word's not gonna go away that, that with in terms it of, like, shouldn't go away concept Michael... and murder murder's <laughs> not gonna go away too like their language is not gonna go but away patriarchy so is a thing become... we can the patriarchy isn't some it's 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 a thing it's not uh, something that's used as a political it can be used as a cudgel to beat people down and say the patriarchy the patriarchy but it is an actual system, right? You understand that. That's why it's not the same as murder. A murder is specifically a murder. You and I can disagree about at what point does it become murder? Is it ever murder? Those things. But the patriarchy is a thing. It's like saying- but the thing is, So what you're doing though is you're discounting like these, it, it's the- It can be a murder. Get, can abortion be a murder? I've been, yes, I would have said, 100%. You know, you know, Noah, like a year ago, six months ago, I would be 100% like- nodding yes yes no no i'm fingers. not i'm not i don't even <laughs> i'm think saying you're... like moving like to move the whole discussion forward 
Can I be honest? The, can I be honest yeah. about this? I, the, the, Please lie was, to me. Just lie the, to no, me. No, no, no. Just good. to relate it to a situation <laughs> that I think that I, I don't always agree with Jerry Seinfeld. I think he's so much detached from the normal human person because he's of his excessive wealth and success. But during that whole kind of Louis C.K., Chris Rock, Ricky Gervais, Seinfeld thing that popped up where they use the N word and Louis C.K. says it and Chris Rock kind of tacitly condones it and Ricky Gervais jumps in. I do think Seinfeld was the most respectful of the situation when he was like, I don't think you can say that word. <laughs> like that to me is the proper response. He's not staking out a position and saying you should or shouldn't. He's just saying, I don't think that's appropriate. And for me, what I'm saying is when it comes to situations like women's choice and abortion, I as I don't feel that it's my place to condemn unless it is an objectively witnessable act of murder to say that we're going to use throw the word murder around for this. It seems like a much more complex uh, situation than that. Murder that is into, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Again, like I said, I would be 100% behind you uh, six months to a year ago. Like, probably is, more close uh, to and then I'm just trying to understand what has changed in those six months to, to be because more Because I realized this. The world is not going to live in a silo. It, it it's not the silo is just going to get bigger, so that we're going to be have to experience opposing languages and viewpoints. So if you have, um, it's it's like if you have that loaded word, and you know words can trigger me as well. Um, I'm not like special, and you know words can words can blah, you know freak me out. Um, I have to learn to work on myself. And this is actually something that you taught me a long time ago, where when we were, when I was working on the mind pod, uh, Instagram, this back in the Ram Dass Raghu days, <laughs> and I was like, if I post something and someone gets offended, you said, well, that's something that they need to work out. You know, this is, and, and to put it in context for the listeners, that was like probably when, at least for me, it was like the most, when I was like the most, uh, <sighs> I don't know what world I was in, but you know, you know, you remember those days. Yeah. I, I like, I was scared to post anything anywhere. You were very sensitive to the everybody. Yes, yes. In every possible way, I stopped shooting for a, mar a large part because I didn't want to offend yes. Yes. people, and I didn't want to be judged by people. And whatever I did, I was. Get and to this day, whatever I do, I, I friends are surprised when I show them the amount of uh, hate and judging and everything for the simplest things. They're just blown away. And I send them screenshots all the time. And it's like, Jesus Christ, this is really your world of people yeah. just like hating on you. Yeah. And so my thing is like people have to toughen up. You know what I mean? Like just toughen the fuck up. Like we've got to do it. We have to be aware. Like friends are so sensitive. Like I have a friend. She's so sensitive. And she just went to Esalen. And she's a sweet person. But it's like she's clueless to the world and how it really works. But she's tough enough. She's unlike most of the people from the spiritual world. She, you can't offend her. You can't trigger well, be, her. You know what? Can I say something about toughening up and all this stuff? I, I generally agree, and I and I, you know, I think again, there's nuance to when someone says that what they're really saying. But I think people who can laugh about stuff, even tragic things and mm -hmm. things that are injustices and unfair and objectively terrible, that's the type of tough I think people need to develop. It's not this kind of numb yourself. Don't think anything can't be nothing can be offensive because like I can laugh pretty much and with any terrible joke someone's going to give but if I sense the person saying it or where it's emanating from is hateful or lacking kindness in mm -hmm. in a real way not just oblivious to it but like purposely negative then it's not being tough even if they're not if even if they're not offended by anything so i think that's the kind of toughness that i think needs to be developed more than anything is like the ability to laugh things off in a genuine uh, way yeah and so when someone like if someone's like standing the, the thing is that like if someone is like man i really got to get this abortion this just isn't going to work and they're going to the uh, abortion clinic and someone yells out it's murder you're a murder you know and if they're just like oh my god i'm not saying like toughen up to the point where you're just cynical and you're like, fuck you. But it's yeah. just like, yep, that's just, they're able to find a way, like find some humor in it as they go through it because they're not yeah. going to, we're not going to be able to stop the Westboro Baptist church. And they, you know, I'm using them as an example, but it trails off more, you know, there, there's more of them out there. 
than just them. And and so no, there are people not, with very strong and, opinions on abortion. And so and so people within our community uh, also have to like respect this. And you know, to go back into like what you said, I agree. Like the patriot, yes, it is a system, and and um, it's like if you're aware of it. So this is the things like you're aware of the nuances of it. Maybe just as like we, if some of us can go over there to the to the ultra conservatives and talk to them about using different words for it, um, coming up with a new language, maybe a good idea would Most be people don't for wanna... the people well, here, for yeah. the people that are coming to the left to say, hey, let's come up with like some really more fine like fine pieces of of what's happening here because there are there are dumb people that hear the word patriarchy and they're really just thinking it means men yeah but you know really are we could be looking at this also from another level that's i think a lot more simple which is that nuance and subtlety doesn't really sell in our current system and selling well it hasn't sold doesn't mean it won't sell Uh, of course not and i mean i think uh, one has to believe that if they want to envision a future that's not just monopolized by soulless corporations so i think that's an important ideal but it is how it works now and until people can kind of go beneath that and maybe recognize that some of the voices the loudest voices on both sides maybe aren't right a hundred percent of the time all of the time yeah. but you know this is a this is a complicated kind of ev- evolving process for a lot of people but what i think is important here is that a lot of people are tuned into this. I mean, these conversations that we're having now, uh, despite coming from s- some different places on certain issues, is not different from a lot of other conversations I have with other people, even when we agree. It's like people are feeling yeah. that this is going on. Um, and I think you mentioned something yesterday that really struck me. It's like it does feel kind of like a birthing process, kind of a transform yeah. transformative, like what are, we're going to come out of the other side, what's going to happen. So, yeah. Well, what's our intention? I think our intention is to build a culture uh, for the next generation. We don't, we don't want the, the next generation to be like, dude, you guys had your shot and you fucking blew it. Yeah. And I, it just is like the, you know, the baby boomers, or whoever, like we yeah. don't want, we don't want people acting the way that we're acting toward them. Yeah. Um, toward us. And so it's like, well, if we're going to work on something and maybe, maybe they've been working on stuff that we don't even notice, like, yeah. you know, the internet. Um, <laughs> Sorry, sidebar. Parkland kids, Fahrenheit, eleven nine. The movie. Michael Moore walks into the room and he's like, you know, maybe one of the things that our generation did well is we raised you. And the girl's like, the internet raised us. What? And it's like, yeah, it's like, come on, come on. Know, and Michael Moore's just it. like, oh yes, children of the future. You're so right. Oh yes. Ugh. I don't anyway. know any. I haven't seen any of that stuff. I think there is. Oh, it's yeah. Cringy. I I don't but know. Anyway, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen it. The, but. Yeah. I, I think we're I think we're birthing something and I think that we're like the we we just want people to get along. We want people to 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 appreciate each other. You know, there's like a lot of um hate and pain and I really didn't want to have this conversation with you after we agreed to it because I was like, I don't I knew that. I was like, I don't wanna I don't this is very uncomfortable because it wasn't so bad, was it? No, 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 no. I mean, when you said it, I was like, fuck yeah, fuck you, Noah, let's do this. I shit. know, I know the whole process. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, of course, Like we both know the process, but it's like, you know, within our community, and especially like from where I'm coming from, like I'm trying to still get work, I'm trying to get steady clients, I'm trying okay. to get people to buy my art, and all they have to do is hear me talking on a podcast about... <laughs> <laughs> abortion is murder! But you're obviously and, not, you're not, I, I don't, I'm not left with the impression that that's how you feel, that that was your overall statement. Um, I I don't think a lot of people are going to come away with that. I think what I notice as your friend more than anything else is you are very open-minded. One of the most open-minded people I've known. You're also incredibly stubborn. So it means that if you (laughs) find something that you like or identify with, regardless of what it is, and you really can like make it a part of you you get very into it. And I've seen that happen a lot. And I think part of, this is why I think subtlety and nuance is so important with this shit is because I think there are a lot of really good conclusions and insights you've gleaned from, let's say, the other side of the coin in terms of political or ideological viewpoints that lead us to the same exact place. And and that that's encouraging. Listen, the, the truth is, is no one is ever going to agree on everything all the time. It's impossible. It's just literally impossible. It doesn't happen in small little clicks of people. It's never going to happen for the world. But the ability to 
disagree with people and still kind of overall agree with what we're trying to do here. That's That, to me, is one side of this spiritual war that you're talking about. I don't view it as a war so much. The other side is the people who the are- The battle? Like, the you, battle, the battle. The people okay. who are like saying, the people who are trying to actively uh, exploit the generosity and good intentions of most people, right? Most people just want to be comfortable and uh, nice to each other and supported and be loved and love other people. That's pretty much everyone's primary motive. The systems we've kind of put on top of our natural being, the way of being, have clearly, not to get too bi you know, bi biblical about it, but they've corrupted a lot of that kind of innocence and natural drive we have as people. I think right now what we're grappling with is the awareness of that fact, but also not having an exact clear solution like, oh, I just get up and do this every day and then it'll yeah. be fixed. And that is a very deep psychic trauma that can be expressed through actual experience, traumatic experiences in life, or just something that's felt by people. But again, I do feel that like more and more people are feeling this and talking about it. And I think as long as you can be open minded and recognize that, you know, we don't come to a conclusion and then stay on that conclusion for the rest of our lives. That rarely is what happens. Yeah. Um, and, Dude, yeah. do you, sorry, do you know about the Overton window? No. Oh, you're going to love this concept. Um, okay. So, cause it goes into what you're saying about, we're not always going to be there. And that's the thing is that like, I think I'm stubborn because like I'm trying to like when I, I was stubborn about spirituality and everything, when the fashion industry was like, just shut the fuck up and focus on shapes and colors, you know, and now I look yeah. around and everybody's meditating and it's gone to the point where they're just drinking green juice and that'll solve all their problems. Yeah. But you kind of, you, you get what I'm saying. Like, it's like I, I go into these corners. So, so, um, that don't make sense essentially. I respect but, that. I respect the hell so out of that. Yeah. So the Overton window, so imagine an X, Y. I read about graph. it while you were talking. I get it now. Okay. Well, so. so <laughs> You're going to keep explaining it. No one else did that. So keep explaining it. I just. Yeah. Well, say. if you, there, there's different. So the thing is like, if you look at the visuals, there's two different ones. There's ones where it's just left and right. And then there's others where it's left, right, up, down. Mm -hmm. But the idea for that. So the listeners, if you imagine, just like take out a sheet of paper <laughs> or just imagine a squ uh, big rectangle. And on the left, you might have. Um, extreme left politics it's, a, it's a, a political science term and any political science scientist is going to tell me i'm fucking this up but whatever. i'll do i'll tell you what they are it's unthinkable radical acceptable sensible popular no, no, okay. policy that's kind of like a sliding spectrum i'm talking about if you have like uh what is it it's like oh, hold on extremist <laughs> Damn, i gotta google this shit no it's like it's, so you're talking about that's like a left right graph correct uh, no, it's the vertical yeah. one. More okay. freedom, less freedom. Overton window. Hold on. Basically, it's, it's, this is what it says, just so people can hear what it is. I'm going well, to find one that actually shows a window, though. I, I know. Let me like just give window. the quick summary, right? The Overton window is the range of ideas tolerated in public discourse, also known as the window of discourse. The term refers to Joseph P. Overton, who claimed that an idea's political viability depends mainly on whether it falls within the window rather than on politicians' individual preferences. According to Overton, the window contains the range of policies that a politician can recommend without appearing too extreme to gain or keep public office in the current climate of public opinion. So it's basically saying, like, you got to be in this range to actually be generally accepted by the populace. That's the idea of the Overton. Yeah. So, 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 um, yeah, thank you for just reading. That made a lot more sense. And so if you actually, if you imagine a square kind of moving around or it doesn't have to be a square, but it's just like kind of a shape that moves around. If you were to say 20 years ago, um, in California, you said gay marriage is going to be a thing. People would be like them faggots going to get married. Uh, it was not a thing. Now you look at it and it's across the country. It's, it's a thing. So the window had shifted from them faggots to, Hey, these are human beings that are getting married. Um, and you had to have some outliers that continue to push it, push it, push it, push it. Um, you look at the wall, right. And, uh, you have Trump who, when he first was doing this, actually, sorry, if you, if you look at the wall and you back up and you look at when Don, when, when, uh, 
Um, Obama was talking about a wall. Others were talking about a wall. It was like, whoa, that radical Muslim is what the conservatives were saying, right? Um, <laughs> and then you look at now, and, and or you look at like two years ago, uh, and it was like that those same conservatives are like, yeah, this man, he knows what's, what's, what's up. Um, now this, this idea of the wall, it's kind of brought into the fray of like, you know, maybe this would be like an okay thing. So it's like the window had shifted and moved over there, whether you like it or not, the window moves around. Yeah. And there's different ways that the, the window can move around. Um, it, it, some of it moves toward good things. Some of it moves toward bad things, but the reality is the window is constantly moving and we have to be aware and this is where i'm really like kind of calling out to my progressive liberal friends it's like hey guys like the window's fucking moving and like when i talk to you i was like you kind of sound like two years or a year ago two years ago like you're really not understanding like where the window is moving at this point and by being aware and of of this and and what's happening um you know it's it's basically the zeitgeist is what it is the, what the window is, but, but, you know, by being aware of it and seeing that part of the, the, the big thing with the window is that liberals have to li like talk with conservatives, like conservatives, not all of them, but many of them are waiting to have a conversation and they're frustrated because whenever they ask to have a conversation or a debate, um, rather than people coming in and saying like, yeah, I'll debate, I'll have a conversation, like uh, a fun Let's let's try to find like where we agree, where we disagree. The the liberals don't want to do it for the most part. You often. know, I hear that. I think that there's probably nuance there as well. But I do think that I've observed kind of if someone it's kind of this like punch a Nazi thing, you know, like, yes, 100 percent punch Nazis. They're terrible. We don't even want to have but then a if conversation you call everybody with a Nazi. Then exactly. Just punch everybody. Exactly. 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 And, and that's something that I think a lot of people miss that transition of if we're just calling everyone a Nazi. And listen, there are some tendencies where people are doing things that are objectively like racist and terrible. Like you don't ostracize them from every part of society, but you let them know that this is not where we're headed as a group, because I don't think people want those divisors, those lines being put up by people who are afraid of other people because they don't understand or for whatever reason. But listen, I gotta, I, we, we've been talking, this is the longest synchronicity in history. <laughs> I really appreciate it though, man. This, yeah. this it's met all of my expectations. I'm not joking at all, but let's do the last few questions and then talk about this more later. Um, all right. All right. What's your favorite color? It's a dumb question. Move on. What's your favorite color? I don't I'm an adult. You don't have favorite colors when you get older. What's the color you like right now? Uh, I just saw the color blue, but then, then I looked at right, the color. All right, blue, blue, locked in, can't change no, it. No, it's blue, orange, it's blue, dude. it's blue. Now I'm looking at green. They're all my fucking favorite color. All right, just let it be noted that Michael's favorite color is blue. Uh what's your favorite no, what's your favorite not. number? What's your favorite number? Three and eight. All right. You can only have one. Everyone else gets as many as they want. You can only have three. Uh what's your favorite animal? Favorite animal. <laughs> Hold on. I'm trying to think of like a joke. I wanted to have like one that murders its baby. <laughs> That's, um, <laughs> I just saw that. It's a crab. There's a type of crab, crab. that does that. Yeah. A crab right it makes now. Makes so favorite. much sense. <laughs> What's a practical? Well, can I just clarify with that with the whole like murder its baby? Like that's the thing. It's like because I'm I'm I am like you get that I'm like joking, right? <laughs> I know that you are not saying it's murder of a baby and that you're being provocative. And I'm not making fun of people that have done that. Of course not. You saying, mentioned like... that you have friends who've had abortions. You're we know people who have had abortions wouldn't hang out with you if they thought you thought they were murdering their babies because they were bad people. So I, I hope that that is murder baby would be a cool band name though. It's not a bad name for certain bands. Uh, last question. What's a practical tip that's helped you in your life that you could share with people listening? Uh, find the people that agree with you. Only talk to them. I love it. I love it. And we will never speak again, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. All right, man. Peace. Peace.
Thanks for listening to that episode. Uh, Michael, a unique, wonderful person. Um, I kind of look at this as him engaging with ideas uh, that I think he will understand more and more over time. But I do think there is something to what he says about uh, the liberal, progressive-minded people, quote-unquote, who are very antagonistic uh, towards any opposing viewpoints. And yes, if you're a Nazi, it's okay to be antagonistic. They're not going to meet you halfway. And that's a very valid point. And I hear that a lot. But if someone disagrees with you or has come to a different conclusion than you, try to understand why. That can maybe help more than just yelling at them and calling them stupid. And this is a problem that I think a lot of people have is they it's hard for them to understand that like maybe someone who voted for Trump isn't doesn't consider themselves a racist and understanding what that means my contention as you know is everybody is racist it is almost impossible to live in this culture without being racist it's really 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 hard and you have to own that because if you don't you sound like an idiot when you go up there and say i don't have a racist bone in my body i have black friends i got asian friends i got all types of friends and it's like eh it's not really what defines racist activity. And if you're supporting and not questioning a system that is prosper, you know, is built on racism and sexism, then yeah, a little racist. It's okay. It's okay. We're all a little racist. Own it. Acknowledge it. Look at it. Try to figure out how to fix it. And then we can move forward. So this episode, I know it's long. If you made it to this point, holy shit. Congratulations. You've gotten through the longest episode of Synchronicity, and I commend you for that. Uh, we will have other guests next week, following weeks. We got a lovely string of people coming up. I promise you, you'll enjoy. That's it for this week, and I will see you next week. <laughs>